in the southern continent of Celts, the idle and peaceful port of Hamlet. An unearthly monster has broken the peace of these surroundings. According to legend, when the undead appeared in the world, they experience disaster and death. Citizens are scared and even hide every time the undead is invading their town. There are a lot of guards ready to defend their burrow and wanted to catch the undead to bring him to the city walls. Our story protagonist here is a cute small naive undead named Grey who tries to fit himself in a human world. At that moment, a purple cat spots Grey as he hides at the rear of the drum. When Grey turned back, the cat was yowling in terror, so Grey covered his mouth to prevent being caught. Grey is staring at the cat, and he recognizes it as a ghost that has possessed a cat. Don't be so surprised. There are many animals in this world that are possessed by ghosts. A skeleton frame like you strutting down the road is a real rarity. You're not out on the ground for the first time, are you? Said the cat which causes Grey to be shocked by how the cat predicted it. The cat questioned why Grey was on the surface rather than remaining below ground in the abyss. Those who stay in the abyss must have a skill that will be valuable to them. Due to his vulnerability as a newborn undead, he allegedly feigned to be a skeleton specimen next to the powerful Lick Brutus in order to study magic. He never imagined that his plan would unintentionally work. For many years, the great sorcerer was unaware of his existence. However, one day, when a priceless magic item was going up for auction at the Abyss Gathering and the sorcerer wanted to attend, he came up with the idea to turn the specimen into a skeleton soldier to help him run errands. Gray didn't want to be a skeleton soldier, so he ran away and unintentionally knocked over the experimental equipment, making the Great Lick quite angry. While escaping, he stole a few treasures and fled to the ground out of fear after hearing the Great Lick threaten to teach him a lesson. After hearing it from Gray, the cat was frightened and lies that he needs to go and even tells Gray that they should pretend they never met because he was scared of the Great Lick. When he was about to leave, Gray pulled his tail but the cat acted angrily because he don't want to be dragged. Gray wondered why he was targeted by a human when he did not interact with humans at all. You don't understand, you're an undead. Do you know what it means to be undead? The cat shouted. The undead is synonymous with calamity and death for humans and according to the cat, people will hold the undead down as a source of disaster. Gray asked the cat why he's not been targeted by humans if he is also an undead creature. The cat explained that he possesses the perfect creature that combines good manners and elegance so humans serve him well that even the girls use their chests to make pillows for him. According to him, he is the master of the human race. Gray feels sad as he doesn't understand what it means to be a perfect creature like the cat experience. In the middle of their discussion, Gray saw someone coming from the gate. She's Iron Berbera, a lovely girl with white hair and blue eyes. Iron is a member of the royal family and she visited Port Hamlet. When she looks around, she thinks that this city is a bit strange because every house was closed. The guard of Port Hamlet apologizes and informed her that they are searching for the undead that has unfiltered the port. Iron was curious but her guard interrupted her to say that they have some errands to do, so she decided to proceed with their destination. After seeing it, Grey wondered why those people were so respected and the cat answered that they are knights, the embodiment of justice and light. The cat also explains that anytime a knight emerges, people will instinctively gather around them since they defend common people and offer peace and stability to people's lives. The cat advised him that he should go back to the underground because he has some place there to hide but Grey refused to do so and he swore I, Grey the Lick, hereby swear that I will become a respectable knight. The cat was startled by what he heard so he told Grey to repeat what he said and Grey said the same thing. You're a Lick who's afraid of humans and you want to be a knight. Do not get me involved if you are sick in the head the cat stated angrily. When sundown, Grey and the cat are still together. Grey showed the cat a suit of armor, but the cat warned him that it is impossible for him to become a knight, even if he steals the equipment from the armory. Grey displayed a book named The Knight's Guide to Success, and he believed that by using it, he might become a knight without much difficulty. The cat was annoyed at he suddenly bite the book and ordered Grey to put him down. The cat said that relying on books of this nature won't help one become a knight and will therefore be useless. As Grey questioned why, the cat yelled that a horse is necessary to be a knight. Gray understands everything so he employed magic to summon an awakened one. Gray concentrated and called the horse Great Tinnitus despite the cat being oblivious to what he was trying to achieve. The skeleton horse has come to life and is making a lot of noise as he tries to comprehend things. The army is already coming so they need to hide. Count Caspar, the lord of Port Hamlet, was present at the same moment at his castle. Iron Berbera, the Duchess of Betcher, is arriving. As soon as she entered the castle, his uncle Caspar greeted her and Iron did so in return. My son is lucky to have a wife like you Caspar stated which makes Iron wonder what he means. Caspar invited Iron to mainly arrange a marriage with his son. Iron feels annoyed and she says it's impossible. Instead of talking about the marriage, Iron asked for some thoughts on how Caspar can help her inherit the title of the Betcher family. Caspar doesn't want to help her and he even includes Iron's brother in their conversation. Iron was mad because she believes his father never had a son. 
Enough iron. The king has declared him to be what he is, Kaspar stated angrily and he advised Iron that she should only keep her mother's property and give up her betcher name in order to marry his son and that she shouldn't turn against it. According to Iron, Kaspar swore to her father that he would continue to be devoted to her after her father passed away. And because of Kaspar's attitude, she gets the handkerchief and throws it in front of Kaspar to make a vow according to the age-old customs. In the city of Kasfador, the guards are still searching for the undead but Grey with the cat and horse is just hiding. The cat is annoyed and wanted Grey to let him go. Aren't you going to help me become a knight? Grey stated, since it is impossible for a lick to be a knight. The cat furiously claimed that he never pledged to assist Grey in becoming a knight. Grey and the horse prepare a set of armor and for Grey, it's not impossible for a lick to become a knight because it's not mentioned in the book. The cat doesn't believe Grey and just wanted to possess another body so Grey offered to turn him into an undead so he never feels tired after it. The cat was terrified and had no choice but to assist Grey in becoming a true knight. The guards had grown weary of searching for the undead and believed that the skeleton had already left town. While the guard was standing on the side, there was a knight and a horse walking through them. The cat, who is feeling uneasy and instructs Grey to proceed straight ahead. The guard stops them only to let them know that the city is under a curfew due to the undead, so they should not roam around and hunt for a hotel to rest in and the guards leave standing. Now that Grey and Tenidos have successfully disguised themselves in armor and utilized Grey's power to control it, Gray's next goal is to find a master who will turn him into a knight. The cat told him that they can't find a master because it was already dark and he should look during the day instead. Since this is Gray's first time as a knight the cat told him that they'll go to the tavern where the knights were hanging out. In the middle of the night, Iron is thinking about what happened in the castle. The knight told him that she needs to rest as they have a duel tomorrow but Iron keeps thinking and asked the knight Horus if her decision was too impulsive. Horus cannot figure out why Iron would agree to such a harsh condition and Iron said that Kaspar would only agree to such conditions. Horus was mad and informed Iron that they can escort her out of Port Hamlet. According to Iron, from the moment the king wanted to illegally seize the Betcher family's territory, they had no choice but to ask Kaspar's troops to support them. In addition, Horus stated that Kaspar had ordered a turn-based conflict between their knights and Kaspar's knights and they only brought 20 knights so there was no way they can win by fighting in numbers. Iron ordered to hire the people in a renowned mercenary group near Port Hamlet. They might succeed if they adopt effective strategies and leverage their advantages to attack their weaknesses. All you need to do is trust the lord you have chosen, Iron said while she swear in the name of Betcher. Going back to Grey and his two companions, they now arrive at the tavern. The cat told him to order a glass of wine and a fish because he was starving and needed to be fed. The attendant welcomed them after they had already entered. Some individuals were curious about him and wanted to include him in their gang. But their boss named Paz won't let them unless Grey can convince him of his value. Grey was thrilled for hearing the attendant calling him Mr. Knight. The cat asked if Grey have some money but Grey answered that he only has one from the Great Lick's treasure house. The cat was disappointed after hearing it so Grey suggests that they can get money in front of them by gambling. Grey really sat down at the table and has been winning a series of games in a row so the cat advised him to lose a few games because people were gossiping about his consistently undefeated and Grey wondered why. Suddenly, there's a man who challenges him to play a few games with him alone and it should be 10 silver coins at a time. After hearing it, the cat told him to not accept the challenge to avoid big trouble with the people. Grey was hard-headed and did not listen to the cat because he was confident that he won't lose the game. After the gambling ends, Grey made a lot of money. In the world of liches and ghosts, the probability is foundational knowledge so he thinks that those people were too mindless. The cat explained that in the human world, it's not good to win all the time and the cat was right. When they're about to leave, those gamblers block them and they think that Grey is cheated so they ordered Grey to leave all his earnings or he will be beaten by these men. See, this is what happens when you cheat the cat proclaimed. Grey is a different person now and he believes Tenidos can help him with this fight. The cat doesn't trust Tenidos because he always feels like Tenidos will fall apart after two steps. Don't worry, leave it to me and Tenidos, Grey stated. Some men were about to retreat because they noticed that Grey is a knight but their boss ordered them to pull Grey onto his horse. There are several opponents in front of him holding a different weapons. Grey and Tenidos prepared themselves to attack. With the help of Tenidos, he strongly kicks these men causing them to spew blood. Tenidos jumped and hit the other men left one by one. They were thrilled to assault these people and in the end, all of them were passed out. There is a crowd watching them and they said that gamblers have met their match this time. Paz is also watching the fight and were puzzled by how Grey fights with the gamblers. The cat was astonished at this point because Grey is a skilled fighter and has covertly given Tenidos several layers of enhancing magic. The following day, word spread that the Lord of Casfador would be facing off against a well-known figure from another country. 
Paz informed him that there was a tournament and that someone had paid a lot of money to employ participants while Gray and Paz were both present. Paz thinks that with Gray's skills, he can win this kind of competition with ease. According to Paz, if a person is not a knight, they cannot compete in this type of tournament, thus Iron gave them the temporary title of knight. Gray wondered why it had to be a short-term solution. He aspires to have the title of a true knight, the one with the seal. On that day, Kaspar said to Iron that he was concerned about the reputation of the Betcher family. Iron is talking to Kaspar without calling him uncle so Kaspar said that she was rude but Iron doesn't care as she only wants to win. And if it happens, she hopes that His Excellency the Count will also not go back on it. This tournament will consist of infantry and cavalry battles, and it will be fought in a turn-based format. Each side will send a knight to the battlefield, and the participant will be eliminated if he loses or surrenders. The winner must accept the challenge of the opposing knight. However, he will have the right to decide whether the next round will be a horse or foot battle. This will be repeated until all the knights on one side are eliminated and the winner is determined. If Count Kaspar loses, he must swear allegiance to Lady Iron and if Lady Iron loses, she must accept the engagement of the Count's son and be married at a later date. The battle is about to begin and the host welcomed the knights on each side. There is a lot of Count Kaspar's guard knight while the attendant knights of Iron are only a few. People started to gossip and even bet that Iron will lose this battle. Kaspar laughed after seeing the few knights of Iron and for him, it was a sign of her stupidity. Iron hired mercenaries and they are all waiting outside the arena. The tournament begins and the fight is started. All these knights protect themselves with their shields while trying to use their lance against each opponent. In game 1, Irene wins and Kaspar loses 1. The Iron Knights maintained their lead in the second round and triumphed, handing Kaspar yet another defeat. In the third round, Kaspar wins and Iron loses 1. Since Iron's unit is currently outnumbered, she gave Horus the order to go gather the mercenaries. Horus asked if Iron intended to use the mercenaries to wear out Kaspar's troops, and Iron replied that because their manpower is limited, they must be placed wisely to counter the Count's troops' superior strength. Outside the tournament, mercenaries have been called and Grey is also there. Horus told them that the match is of the utmost importance to house Betcher so they should help win the battle. Although they promised to try their best, mercenaries said they could not guarantee the outcome. Suddenly Grey is raising his hand and asks Horus to make him a knight. Hasn't the lady already granted you the title of a knight? Horus questioned. Gray insisted that he don't want a temporary title, he wanted to be a real knight with a seal. Horus was irritated because he believed Gray to be feeling ambitious. But Iron cut him off and told Gray that the title of the knight cannot be earned by merit and it cannot be awarded arbitrarily. Sir, if you can defeat fifty men for me in the tournament, I will give you the title of knight. Only if you can, Iron said. Gray and the cat were both surprised, and the cat even concludes that Iron is asking too much so he told Gray to refuse but unfortunately, Gray accepts the challenge. Well then, I'll be waiting to see you in action, Iron said and walk away with Horace. Gray was scolded by the cat for accepting Iron's offer, but Gray was overconfident that 50 people was a small number and that Tenitos could kick hundreds of them. To force Tenitos into the arena, Gray needs to defeat the knights in a foot war. Only the winner has the right to change the fighting method. Iron goes back to the tournament and Kaspar didn't expect her to rely on the Red Scorpion mercenaries. No wonder the Betcher family is on the decline. Kaspar said and Iron answered, You have to wait a little longer to find out if it's on the decline. Paz has been called to the ring and for him, it appears like the good days are over, so he needs to take the fight a little more seriously. Kaspar was astounded to witness a skillful individual engaged in combat with his troop. Paz is engaging Kamli with his sword, attacking Count's troop and finally, he knocked down his opponent and the crowd was cheering and asks for another battle. Kaspar wondered how Paz won five games in a row and his subordinate answered that Paz is the leader of the Red Scorpion mercenary. Since Kaspar started to be irate, he ordered his man to put his skilled troop to fight against Paz as a consequence of going against him. While the audience is cheering and predicting Paz's battles, Count is sending a new knight and all of the people were shocked because it's a giant troop in front of Paz. Iron and Horus were puzzled after seeing it. Buddy, let's have some fight. The giant stated with an evil look. Because of how big he is, Paz started to think to withdraw from the battle. Meanwhile, on Gray's side, he was trained by the cat on how to use the swords but Gray can't even hold it so the cat told him to give up. The battle of Paz versus Count's troops is about to begin. People gossip about the giant troop like a monster and even the crowd feels scared. It's the knight's duel between Count Kaspar and Lady Iron's twelfth match begin. The giant troop was very determined to hit Paz using his giant mace and good thing that Paz was able to dodge it. He attacks using his sword but his sword has been broken. The giant laughed at him and Paz started to rattle because he don't have any other weapon to use. The only thing he can do now is to dodge but because of the strength of the giant troop, he was still hit and thrown to the corner with blood on his body. People were worried while Kaspar is happy seeing Paz suffering in pain. 
This is what happens when you go against me, Kaspar stated, as still manages to get up even though he feels like his ribs have been fractured. The giant troop was still in front of him and was about to hit him once more but he began to have a serious look and jumped through the giant holding his broken sword and hitting the giant in the eyes. The giant is screaming in agony and can't see anything and at this moment, Paz seizes the chance and runs towards the giant to stab him. The giant was very mad but he cannot do anything and at this point, he was knocked out by Paz. Since Paz spitting blood, Iron decided to replace him. On the other hand, Grey is busy making a weapon since he can't use a sword. The cat reminded him to hurry before the tournament will end. The fight between Iron and Count Kaspar went on until midnight. By now, Iron had suffered heavy losses, with four executed, seven seriously wounded, and several surrendered, leaving only six able to fight. Although Count Kaspar's side was not as strong as Iron's side, they relied on their numbers to suppress the other party and still had a total of 61 people left. Paz is on the roof watching the battle and thinking how brave Iron's knight is, but their chance is too little at this moment since they only have six troops left. While he was thinking, Horus called him and was annoyed because half of Paz's mercenaries surrendered after half of the fight. We're paid to fight for you. We never said we'd sell our lives, Paz answered. Horus can't do anything but calm himself and asked for Grey but Paz doesn't know where he is and he just answered that Grey must feed his cat. At this time, Count Kaspar's team wins again and there are only five people left on Lady Iron's side. Horus decided to fight against Count's troops and when he was about to walk in the middle, he heard a sound behind him. When he turned around, he saw a gigantic gate carried by Grey. People were shocked and doesn't have any idea what was going on. Grey continued to carry the gigantic gate and asked how many people were left on Count Kaspar's side. Count Kaspar and Lady Iron were both perplexed and Iron trust Grey this time. Hey uncle, what about Count Kaspar's side? Grey asked Horus so heroes informed him that Kaspar has over 50 knights left so he can now go and fight. Grey was happy and now ready to go straight to the ring with his gigantic gate and when he put the gate in front of the opponent, it seems like it has a big explosion and the opponent flew away. Gary climb up to the top of the gigantic gate and stand straight while saying I'm ready. Let's start the match. The opponent was remained speechless and immediately kneeled to surrender in front of Grey. For the next match, Count's troops still surrendered and were afraid that they might be beaten left right and center. Because of Grey, all of Count Kaspar's troops don't want to fight against him. Count Kaspar interrupted and said how dare you demolish the gate of the Count's palace and use it as a weapon. What a shame, I won't tolerate this ever. All the people also noticed that it was the gate of the Count's palace. Kaspar is now trembling in anger and his subordinate informed him that his knights would rather give up their titles than go to fight so he suggests changing the mode of completion to cavalry fight. Kaspar agreed to it as this is the only chance they have to win the tournament. Grey is very bored at this time because no one wants to fight with him. Kaspar called him and said that he wants to see Grey's skills in cavalry. Grey was puzzled and Kaspar is interrupted by Iron who points out that according to the tournament's regulations, the winner gets to choose how the following match will be played. Kaspar warned her that if she refused to participate in the horse battle, his men would not fight and the competition would continue without them. Iron is now frightened as she couldn't do anything. Brave knight, are you willing to accept the request for a horse battle? Kaspar asked and Grey told him that he will accept the horse battle if Kaspar will send out all of his knights at once to fight with him. After hearing from Grey, Iron was surprised. Kaspar asked if Grey means that all of the rest of his men will fight together and Grey confirmed it. If these guys stop coming out halfway through the fight, he won't have 50 people defeated. Horus shouted to warn him but Kaspar accept the deal. At the moment, Horus doesn't trust Grey and wanted to stop the match. Iron called Grey by his name and said are you making such a request with full confidence? And Grey replied, exactly, I will bring your victory. Because of Grey's statement, Iron let him show Grey's bravery and trust him wholeheartedly. Grey jumped from the top of the gate and Tenitos with the cat on the roof went towards Grey and he successfully rides to Tenitos. Kaspar immediately ordered to get all of his knights on the stage and his subordinate followed his order and told all the knights to prepare for the battle. Several knights with their horses are coming and getting in their formation in front of Grey. As there is just one opponent on the opposing side, the Count's warriors are certain that they will win the tournament. They started to attack Grey, but Tenitos used his head to stop them. Grey pulled a sword, but the adversary is unaware that he doesn't have the skill to use it, so he attacked Grey with all of his strength, and Grey just parried the blow which makes the opponent to be annoyed. Grey trusts Tenitos to take care of all these troops with just one hoof. At this moment, the horsemen are now pissed off and Tenitos asked what they will do. Since swords don't work, let's use the old method of lick, Grey stated and use his magic, a colossal magic quadruple. Tenitos feels more strong because of Grey's magic. The troops are rushing towards them while Tenitos is running with unbelievable speed. Count's knight was executed one by one and no one can stop Grey. 
They now thought that Grey is very skillful at riding horses so their plan is to stab Tanitos but because of magic, the sword can't hit Tanitos. While almost all of the opponents were knocked down, Grey, Tanitos, and the cat were happily fighting against them. The opponent was scared of Grey and they thought that he was not a human but a monster. Kaspar was surprised to see his troops all knocked out and he even thought that Grey is cheating. Horus was glad to see Grey successfully win the battle and Iron gives back to Grey his sword. Grey reminded her that he already defeated 50 people in the tournament as promised so he should be granted the title of knight. Of course, I will fulfill my promise and grant you the title of a knight with a seal. Iron declared. In the spring of the 10,753 Holy Calendar, in the territory of the Kingdom of Isaac at the southern end of the continent Celts, a great knight was born who is going to change the whole world in the future. Some people left the scene in anger because of this. Some people are cheering for him and Grey himself has no idea about it but was happy experiencing this kind of fulfillment. The next day, Grey is throwing away gold coins and gems in the castle and many people give thanks for his kindness. The cat asked what is he doing and Grey answers, distributing the treasure I found to the poor. Last night, Iron bestow upon Grey the title of the Knight of the Silver Moon. She hopes that Grey will walk alongside her in the future. I will fight for you to my death, Grey answered. Iron prepared a room for Grey and the cat now believes that the Lick has actually become a knight. Upon realizing it, Grey was very happy and walked around the room because of his excitement. Afterward, he decided to read the book to learn something about being a knight. The cat was about to sleep but Grey won't allow him as he still needs advice. Upon reading the book, it says that the knight always gives treasure to the poor so Grey asked the cat where to find the treasure and who are the poor. The cat answered, compared to Count Caspar, everyone in Port Hamlet is poor. For the treasure, this castle is full of it so feel free to find it yourself. After that the cat fell asleep. That's why this day, Grey robbed Count Caspar's castle and give it all to the poor. On the other side, in the temporary office of Iron, Abby Robert, and Horace entered her room to ask if she really going to trust Grey. You must have witnessed his bravery. And I need his strength, Iron answered. Robert insisted that Grey is not trusted since they did not know his past and didn't even bother to take off his helmet at the pledging ceremony. But still, Iron is very confident about Grey and told Robert to not talk about Grey in the future. In just a minute, one knight came to Iron's room and delivered the news that the Silver Moon Knight which is Grey has robbed Count Caspar's treasury and thrown it from the castle tower. After hearing the news, Iron Horace and Robert were shocked and disappointed by what Grey did. Iron never considered herself a competent lord. She was trained by her father and was told that if she fall easily, there was no way she can become the next Grand Duke of the Betcher family. However, there was one quality that Iron hadn't noticed, and that is she's very good at putting on an act. While Iron is en route to Grey, Caspar was already in the castle tower, standing in front of Grey, reprimanding him for plundering the castle's treasure. Grey told Caspar that he was giving the wealth he found to the poor as every knight does but Caspar was very mad because it was his own treasure and he called Grey a despicable thief. Since Grey is a naive lick, he wasn't aware that this treasure belongs to an owner and he even told Caspar that he doesn't know since there is no written name on it. Iron and his knights heard Caspar scolding Grey so Robert told her that they better stop Grey before the issue gets too big. In addition to putting on a show, Iron has another trait that is essential to being a lord. That is an incredibly keen insight into an opportune moment. Caspar ordered Grey to call his master but Iron was already behind him and said, What a surprise. Uncle Caspar has requested to see me. Iron believes that Caspar is avoiding her because he didn't want to fulfill his vow. Grey immediately greeted his master as well as Iron to him. Iron goes near Caspar and whispers that if he refuses to fulfill his vow she has the right to deprive him of his title immediately. Caspar feels shocked and thought that Iron is the one who deliberately sent Grey to attack his treasure, but Iron told him that she didn't anything about it but is willing to compensate for the damage that Grey caused. After all, I am not like a certain person. I am very credible Iron stated which caused Caspar to be annoyed and threw the charter before leaving the tower. Grey asked Iron if he did something wrong and Iron told him that he has done very well. Iron was grateful that Caspar had forgotten that she had no right to deprive him of his title before becoming Grand Duchess, and he was grateful for the pressure Grey put on Caspar at this point. She also educates Grey that robbing other people of their wealth is wrong and that if it ever happens again, his pay will be withheld in retaliation. Since Iron got the charter, they don't need to stay in Port Hamlet so she told Grey to pack up his things as they need to go to White City by tomorrow. The cat is speechless and thinks that only such an unreliable master accepts a lunatic knight as Grey but he was happy to see Grey slowly achieve his dream. The following day, as Iron and Grey prepared to depart from Port Hamlet, regular soldiers appeared in front of them. When Grey questioned why there are so many knights present but they did not participate in the tournament, the cat responded that they were just normal soldiers and only knights were permitted to participate in the battle. 
The cat noticed that there is another group of thousands of people that Kaspar got by contact so he senses that horrible things are about to happen. When night comes, one soldier looks for Grey and when Grey appears, the soldier informed him that Horus ordered him to visit Lady Iron's tent. Iron ordered Horus with all the troops to use the charter as an opportunity for them to force more lords to join their camp and he needs Horus to spread the word as he is the only reliable person for Iron. Horus won't accept her order because he's afraid that only Grey is left on her side. If Grey has second thoughts about me, do you have the power to stop him? Iron stated which makes Horus and Robert remain speechless. Grey arrives at Iron's tent and when he entered, these two men were staring at him so Grey immediately asked if what's wrong. Horus suddenly hold his arm and said I'm counting on you for the safety of Lady Grey. After saying that, Horus and Abby Robert left the camp but Grey doesn't know precisely what heroes mean to say so he decided to ask Iron but he doesn't know what to say. Iron feels that Grey is nervous but Grey told her that he was not nervous, he just doesn't know what to do. To put it simply, you just have to stand there and knock down anyone who tried to attack me, Iron said and because of that Grey understand everything. Iron feels odd since Grey refused to take off his helmet and didn't know the knight's oath. She started to think that Grey is not a human. What are you talking about? Of course, I'm a knight born and raised in this country, Grey said while his eyes are flickering drastically. They are both talking in the tent about Grey's identity while the cat is listening to them and he suddenly noticed someone from above. Iron informed Grey that she was not doubting. From the moment you pledged your allegiance to me, you have been my knight. I will pay for who you are and make sure you don't get abused for it all Iron said causing Grey to shed tears because of happiness and he promised Iron that he will be loyal no matter what. After that, Iron said to Grey that he should be ready since it was almost time to welcome the guests. Grey was puzzled and suddenly, someone entered in Tear Iron's tent. The Ravens are a group of assassins based in the southern part of the Kingdom of Isaac. As long as they're willing to pay, they will execute anyone right from the royalty down to the old and weak. Among the Ravens, an assassin named Spectre is the most fearsome. Other assassins take money for their work, but Spectre is a monster assassinated for fun. Now, his target is the woman with white hair and blue eyes which is Iron Berbera. Grey immediately throws the sword at Spectre because he remembered that Iron told him he needs to knock down anyone who tries to attack the young lady. After seeing it, Iron told Grey that swords are not supposed to be thrown. Grey covers Iron and he believes that Spectre has an assassination intent comparable to the Great Lick. Spectre attacked Grey with fast speed and he thought that he has been cut Grey into pieces. When he pulled his sword, he then saw that it has been broken. Grey tees him as he thought that Grey will be over. Grey slaps Spectre and throws at the corner. While they are fighting, Iron doesn't know what was going on. What she saw is Spectre was the one who broke his own sword in the first move and proudly swung the broken blade a dozen times and also thought that Grey didn't notice it. She thinks that both of them have gone crazy. Since she doesn't understand what was going on with both Spectre and Grey, she just ordered Grey to throw Spectre outside the tent. Grey suddenly asked Iron if she already know that this assassin is coming. Iron answered that they usually come to her once every three days and they might come many times now that Horus and others are not with her. Grey then realizes that it's more worse than the times he was being hunted in the underground. While Grey throws the assassin outside the tent, he told Iron that he didn't know the situation of Iron and only knew that Iron can make him a knight. Iron explained everything to Grey. She said it was all about money and power or simply because many people wanted her to disappear from this world. It all began without any complications. Two months ago, the Grand Duke of the Betcher House passed away unexpectedly. After his death, the Grand Duke, in his will specified that his only daughter Iron would inherit his title and property. But at that moment, an illegitimate son named Jones suddenly appeared. Although the Grand Duke has an illegitimate son, according to the law, an illegitimate son had no right to inheritance. The problem was that the illegitimate son was brought out by the king. The king had the right to grant the illegitimate son the legal right of succession. And because the illegitimate son was a boy, even with the will of the Grand Duke, he was entitled to the inheritance instead of Iron. This was an obvious conspiracy. The king wanted to take over the Betcher family's territory in a bloodless manner. Some of the people feared the king's authority, and therefore did not dare to help even though they knew the truth. Others, seeing the benefits, tried to help the feudal lords to take advantage of the situation. In short, from the day she lost her father, there were many people who wanted the 16-year-old girl to disappear as soon as possible. So, assassination became a common affair for her. The next day, Lady Iron together with Grey returned to the capital of the Duchy of Betcher, the White City. Someone ordered the guards to welcome Iron and open the gate. She's Shelley, a young lady with blonde hair and blue eyes, and was happy seeing Iron return safely. Shelley also heard that Iron met a very brave knight during her trip to Port Hamlet. When they entered the town, people gossip after seeing the legendary Silver Moon Knight which is Grey. The cat asked Grey if he understand what Lady Iron told him but Grey didn't understand any of it. The only thing he knows is he must defeat the king, or else he will lose the knighthood he earned. 
When Gray looked around, he was happy after seeing the people cheering for him. He started to like the place because it's very lively and he feels the feeling of being alive. Iron acknowledges what Gray said and agreed that a white city is a lively place that's why she has to guard this place to keep it alive. Iron offers Gray that she will prepare new armor for Gray and Tanitos so she asked Gray if he had any specific requirements for it. According to Iron, Gray is now considered an important member of the Betcher family so his attire should be dignified. Aside from that, Iron informed Gray of one more thing. Once they settled in, she will invite all the nobles of the city to a ball to let them know that she returned alive with her troops and horses. Therefore, Gray should attend the ball with Iron since Gray is her guardian knight. Iron told him to be prepared and Gray was puzzled because it was his first time. While they are discussing, Gray was not aware that there's someone spotted him from above and knew that he was a lick. Her name is Catherine, an angel with white hair and blue eyes. In accordance with the Greystone Agreement, they sign with the liches before it mutilates humans. They should observe the situation and refrain from taking action against it. When the night comes, Gray is observing with his new armor and he was very glad and thankful for Iron for being a superb lord. The cat reminded Gray about the ball but Gray doesn't know anything about it so the cat told him that it was a party where everyone got together and dance. And what is dancing? Gray questioned. The cat showed him a sample of dance and Gray followed his steps he then concludes that it was like some kind of mystical ritual. While they are practicing, someone knocked on the door so Gray immediately wears his armor and opens the door. The maid introduced herself to Gray and informed him that Lady Iron is waiting for him. The maid guides his way to the lady and when they arrived, Gray was surprised by Iron's look but because of the jewels, he imagines himself wearing it since it has a gorgeous fabric. Lady Iron asked Gray if he was ready and Gray confidently answered yes. Iron extended her hand to Gray and told him they'll go downstairs but Gray was puzzled and wondered why Iron isn't leaving yet if she said that they need to go downstairs. The cat hit him in the head and informed him that Iron wanted him to help her go. Why do I need to hold her has she fractured her ankle? Gray asked the cat but the cat told him to stop asking and just held Iron's hand. Gray immediately held Iron's hand and when they both walking, Gray suddenly said my lady, your gown looks great today. Can I wear it? Iron wasn't sure of what she heard so she told Gray to repeat what he said but Gray said the same thing. But you're a man, right? Iron asked but Gray wasn't sure what man is. The cat scolded him for being ignorant that might reveal his identity and expose him to the people. After hearing it, Gray took back what he said and told Iron to forget about it. Iron realizes that since Gray doesn't want to take off his helmet, refuses to take off the armor, doesn't want to mention his past life, and likes pretty dresses, she then concludes that this knight in front of him is not Gray but Gray's. Iron forgets about it and continues to face the crowd. People greeted them and were curious after seeing Gray with a cat sitting on his shoulder. As the 13th heir of the Betcher family, Iron welcomed all the people who attended the ball and told them to enjoy themselves this evening. I look forward to our families remaining as close to each other as they have been in the past to maintain good relations. At the same time, also hope to use this opportunity today to resolve the previous disagreements among us in one stroke Iron stated and drink the wine in front of everyone. Shelley concludes that Iron is targeting her grandpa named Gregory. Gray noticed Gregory and Iron told him that Lord Gregory is the third of Atwood. He is from a famous family with a long history of wealth and a great military force. He is also a prime candidate to win battles against the king. Iron also informed Gray that Gregory declined her request but since Gregory is present at the ball, she believes that there's still a chance for her. She immediately walked towards Gregory and greeted her uncle and Gregory did the same and invite her to have a dance. Gray was about to go with Iron but Shelley interrupted him and said that he can't follow Iron on the dance floor. Shelley concludes that Gray wanted to dance so she invites Gray to dance with her instead of waiting for Iron. Gray was puzzled once again after seeing Shelley extend her hand and he thought that Shelley might also have a fractured ankle. The cat informed him that she has no fractured ankle but for the sake of the great lord he asked Gray to keep his distance from Shelley. Gray followed what he say and move away from Shelley so Shelley wondered what he was doing. The cat shouted and told Gray that he was not talking about physical distance. Shelley suddenly cries because she feels that she was humiliated. Since the cat believed that this woman is an expert, he told Gray to stop her from acting up to avoid being in trouble. Gray has no idea what he should do so the cat told him to tell Shelley that she's the most beautiful woman in the world. Gray doesn't want to lie because Iron is the most beautiful woman for him but the cat forced him to do so. Gray followed the cat and kneeled in front of Shelley. Shelley was thrilled after hearing it from Gray and she immediately invites Gray to dance with her. Gray said, I'd be honored. Shelley was happy dancing with Gray and her real plan is to see what Gray really looked like under his helmet. While they are dancing, Shelley complains because Gray doesn't know how to dance and always steps Shelley's feet. Gray apologized to Shelley and informed her that this is his first time. It's okay. It's actually my first time too dancing with a man in armor and he is stepping on me like crazy, Shelley stated. Since both of them are not good at dancing, Shelley told him that Gray should lead since he's a man. 
Gray wondered again and doesn't know if he was really a man but he just enjoyed dancing together with Shelley. Iron and Gregory are looking at them and Gregory wondered why Gray still wearing armor at the ball. Iron informed him that it was Gray's habit and she also opened up about her request previously and asked Gregory to reconsider it carefully. Gregory told her that he don't refute the talent she had shown as a lord in the past two months. You are very good, but that is not nearly enough, Gregory said. He also informed Iron that Gregory's motto is only to support those who are destined to win and it's the reason why he survived for a thousand years. Going back to Shelley and Gray, Shelley invited Gray to go outside the hall and join her for a walk. While they are outside, Shelley removes her sandals and said that she can't be able to go back to dance with a swollen foot. Gray apologize again and Shelley asked him to look for some medicine and apply it to her feet. Upon hearing it, the cat believes that Shelley is flirting and wants to make love with Gray to reproduce and completely trapped. Gray doesn't understand what the cat said and what he only knew is he needs to help Shelley heal her foot so he immediately kneeled in front of Shelley and implies holy healing. Shelley witnessed how Gray used magic to heal her foot. Suddenly, there's a young man named Matthew who saw Gray hold Shelley's foot and he was mad at Gray for holding a lady's foot with his hand. He stated that all the knights from the Betcher family are shameless and he immediately challenges Gray to a duel. Gray accepts his challenge without any hesitation but the cat was annoyed and reminded Gray that this man in front of them is the one Lady Iron trying to win over and they'll have a political problem if Gray fights someone over. The cat thought that Shelley will testify so he ordered Gray to explain everything to Matthew but suddenly, Shelley expressed her feeling for being happy that there are two men going to fight for her. From above, Angel Catherine still followed Grey and she believes that Grey is an undead that can use divine magic. Inside the ball, Iron heard noise from the outside and her guard told her that the Silver Moon Knight have insulted Lady Shelley of the Gregory family. Iron thinks that it might be a coincidence this time so she immediately goes outside. Matthew shouted to Grey to explain why he humiliated Lady Shelley. There are some people around them but Grey can't answer anything since he doesn't understand what Matthew is talking about. Since Grey can't answer, Matthew just asked Shelley to explain what Grey did to her. Shelley informed him that the Silver Mood Knight only healed her injured foot and she was impressed since it didn't leave any scratches. Matthew concludes that Shelley is trying to defend Grey and he also stated that there is no medicine in the world that can heal a person instantly without leaving a scar. The people started to gossip that Grey deceived Lady Shelley and Grey was still puzzled because of his ignorance. He doesn't have any idea of the most words that people used and started to be scared but the cat forced him to explain himself or else he will lose his reputation and suffer a social death. When Iron came, Gray told her that everyone is talking about something that he don't understand. Miss Iron, you're just in time. The character of the Betcher Knights is really unacceptable Matthew stated. Iron asked them what was going on and Matthew told them that he came to the courtyard and he saw Betcher Knight hitting on Shelley. After hearing it, Gregory was mad so Iron told him to take it easy and hear first what the people involved had to say. She asked Gray first and Gray told her that he stepped on Shelley's foot at the ball and hurt her so he helped Shelley heal a little. Iron next asked Shelley and since Shelley had no idea how to explain it, she just told Gray to use it again one more time in front of everyone. Gray was puzzled so Shelley told him that he must show again the one that instantly cured her. Gray tried to use his holy healing magic but it won't work again so he apologizes to Shelley since he can't use it a second time in a short period. His hand was immediately burned off after using divine magic and will take several days to recover. If his other hand will also be burned off, he won't be able to control the armor with puppetry. Because of what happened, Gregory told Iron that before she asked for his help, she needs to keep her men in check. Iron apologizes but she still trusts Gray. She will look into this matter and find out who is actually slandering. Gregory was still mad and told her to stay out of Gregory's family matters. The next morning, there are people coming to White City and according to Horace, it's Count Felder who has come to their aid with his army. Now that the military of the three counts of the Duchy of Betcher has gathered in the White City, Horace conclude that the situation is turning in their favor. Since Iron has just returned to White City and Felder Edward III has arrived on the second day, she thinks that it might be a bit too much of a coincidence. Horace and Iron welcomed Felder and Iron noticed someone inside the wagon. Felder stated that it was his son, little Jimmy. He's not well and the doctor says he can't get into the sun. That's why the wagon is covered by a black cloth. Felder also stated that if the civil war really starts, it could be dangerous to leave him. Iron asked for Felder's approval to see Jimmy and so Felder's knight informed Jimmy that Iron from Betcher's family wanted to see him. Jimmy introduced himself and greeted Iron and she told Felder that Jimmy is a cute child. After a while, Iron enters her base and discuss with Robert and heroes about Count Felder helping them. Horace feels that there's something that has been reciting Iron since this morning and Iron just stated that the timing of Felder's appearance is too much of a coincidence also his son little Jimmy was very cute looking but nothing like Felder since his hair is white. While Felder was in the Betcher castle, someone suddenly came and asked for another chance to Felder. 
He's Matthew and stated that he didn't expect that Iron would rather offend the Gregory family to protect the Silver Moon Knight. Please give me another chance. I'll make sure that Silver Moon Knight is out of the Betcher's camp he said. While Grey was in his room, the cat wondered what he was doing. I'm making a list of things I have to do as a knight. Grey stated, he remembers that at the ceremony of becoming a knight, Iron let him read some vows. According to him, liches and demons don't often swear but they keep their vows and because of that he wants to keep those promises he'll gonna start with the easiest way, to assist anyone who needs help. He's planning to go to the town and the cat suggested that he should not go to the town right now. Suddenly, someone throw tomatoes at his head and this lady was annoyed with Grey for appearing in the street. The lady continued to throw him some tomatoes and told him to get out on the street. Grey now wondered why he get the feeling that people aren't very friendly to him and it wasn't like this when he first came into town. The cat told him that it doesn't have anything to do with Grey personally. It was just that there were people spreading rumors in White City after the ball and these people were just deceived by that rumors. The streets of White City are really lively, except for the weird looks people give to Grey. While they are roaming around the city, someone is calling at their back. He's asking for some help from Grey. Please help us. The knight in armor the little boy stated while kneeling to Grey. After hearing it, Grey was happy and realized that it was time for him to shine. No problem. Whatever your troubles are, I'll take care of them, Grey stated. The little boy told Grey that his sister was kidnapped by the gangsters and they demanded this kid bring Grey in front of them. The cat warns him that it's a naked conspiracy, but Grey doesn't care since the kid asked for his help. He wanted to help rather than sit back and do nothing. Gangsters making fun of Grey coming to where they are. The kid told them that he already brought Grey to them so they should let her sister go. The gangster suddenly throw her sister and Tanitos jumped while Grey catch the girl. Are these kids just going to ambush me unarmed like this? Grey said and the kid feels sad but suddenly shout to tell everyone that the knight of the Betcher family has taken someone captive. The girl also shouted for help and Grey started to panic because he doesn't have any idea what was going on. All the people started to come and humiliate Grey. He was forced to get off the horse but Grey followed them because he believes that he did not do something wrong. The little girl was still acting to show everyone that she has been harassed by Grey. The boy who asked for Grey's help cornered him to look like a bad knight in front of the people and they have a master who paid a lot of money. Suddenly, while he was escaping, he was held by Shelley's order to her guard and he keeps asking who they are. It doesn't matter who I am. First tell me about the young master who will give you a lot of money, Shelley stated which caused the boy to cry. Grey was also crying and the people has a sign hung onto his neck stating that he was a bad knight. They tie Grey's hand and they will take him to the castle to report the incident to Lady Iron. Suddenly, Shelley came and blocked the way. People started to gossip about Shelly and they knew that she was the girl from the ball who was bullied by Grey. Shelly asked them what was going on and this man told her that they were teaching Grey a lesson for bullying people from this town. Shelly explained that they misunderstood everything. That the Lord Silver Moon didn't bully her but helped her heal his feet. One man asked about the rumors from the ball circulated to this town and he also added that Grey is bullying the little girl. Shelly asked for the presence of the girl who they said was bullied by Grey. A lady brings the girl in front of Shelly and Shelly immediately walks toward her. At this moment, the kid is still acting up, and Shelly pulled its hood where they can witness that the kid is not a girl but a boy. People were shocked and Shelly told them that they has been fooled by these kids. She ordered to bring the other kids and the crowd noticed that one of these kids is the one who cried out for help. Shelly explained that these kids are just victims of rumors and staged the prank themselves. The crowd is now claiming that they blame the wrong person. Shelly ordered to untie Grey and reminded all the people that when the time Lady Iron gave Grey the title of Knight of the Silver Moon, she also gave him a baroncy and a part of the fief. In other words, people insulted the honor of a baron without any reason. As a baron, Grey has the right to sanction them all. After hearing it, Grey told them that he will sanction everyone. People asked for forgiveness but Grey stated that forgiveness is not something that the perpetrators can just talk about. They must pay for it. He changed the message written on the sign and told the people to take the sign and walk then he will forgive them all. Shelley laughed at Grey and the people were glad that Grey can still give forgiveness after what happened. On the other side, Felder and Matthew are observing them. This is what happens when you're given another chance. Felder questioned. Grey gives thanks to Shelley for helping him solve the misunderstanding with the people and Shelley just intended to return the favor. Shelley informed him that the person who framed him is young Master Matthew from the inner camp of Betcher, the one who was after him the night of the ball and he should let Iron know about it. Shelley also stated that she's afraid of Matthews's purpose which might be to alienate Grey and Iron so Grey better investigate Matthews's background. The cat still senses that there is something fishy so he told Grey to ask why Shelley is telling all this information. If Shelley gets too close to Grey, she might drag Gregory into the war but since she thinks that Grey is funny that's why he told everything to Grey. They were about to part ways but Matthew suddenly pulled Shelley. Her guards can't do anything because Matthew threatens them that he will execute Lady Shelley once they will come closer. 
Matthew obviously did this in order to not get her involved in this war. He was abandoned by Lord Felder because he failed the mission given by Felder and now he was mad at Shelley for helping Gray solve the hatred of the people. Even if he failed to sow discord, if he could just eliminate Gray, Felder would definitely be happy. He dares Gray that he will let Shelley go once Gray rips off an arm and a leg. Since Gray is not Shelley's subordinate, she thought that Gray can't do it for her. Matthew laughed evilly and Gray started to think. While he's looking straight at Shelley he stated fine. I agree to this condition and rip one of his arms in front of everyone. I hope you will keep your word, Gray said. The guards were shocked and Matthew really believed what he saw. Gray then throws the empty armor at Matthew causing him to be unbalanced. While Shelley examines the damaged armor, she comes to the conclusion that it is merely empty and that Gray invented the story that he pulled his arm back into the armor to make it appear more realistic. Matthew warns Shelley that the moment will come when she will be sobbing uncontrollably while holding her grandfather's corpse. Since Gregory's mansion is really well located and there are no people near the locality, they easily sneak in and it means that they have plenty of time to talk to Gregory before people will find out. Gregory believes that these people are not here to eliminate him and because of his confidence, the boss tried to throw a knife on his head and ordered him to write a letter to his fief right away and asked them to send troops to support the Betcher family against the king. Support the Betcher family. But you are not the men of iron Gregory stated and these people don't want to tell their true identity so Gregory refused to write the letter. The man started to be annoyed and shouted to Gray that he don't have the option to refuse and that if he will not write a letter, everyone in the mansion will be executed. If they will execute Gregory, they won't get his letter or seal and after his death, his son will inherit his title according to the will. It is a will that has been proved by the archbishop, and even the king cannot interfere with it. Gregory knew that Felder is the one who sent all of these men to kidnap him and they were shocked at how Gregory knows about it. At Betcher Castle Study Hall, Lady Iron and Felder are talking and someone interrupts them to inform them that there's a messenger for Count Felder outside the castle so Felder excuses himself to Lady Iron. Iron started to doubt so she ordered Abby Robert to send a message to Horace to follow Felder's messenger with a bunch of men. Felder's messenger sends information that Gregory inferred that it was he who ordered people to kidnap Gregory. Felder told his messenger to go back to his people as due as instructed. For him, as long as his goal will be done, there is no fear that Gregory will not comply. After that, Felder go back to Iron and Iron asked what happened. Nothing, it's just some trivial matter in the fiefdom, nothing important, Felder answered. White City has been under martial law, and without Iron's order, it is forbidden to open the city gates at night so she asked Felder how his messenger from his fief entered the White City. Because of what Iron stated, Felder has been puzzled. At the house of Gregory, Felder's men are still waiting for the messenger to send Felder's return. When they look out the window, they thought that it is the messenger who came but they recognized her. Shelley is already outside Gregory's mansion. When she entered, she wondered why the hall is dark and there was not even candlelight. Together with Shelley, the cat accompanies her. Shelley is thinking that maids recruited from White City are unreliable so they should be thrown up. While she was walking in the hall, she did not notice that there was someone behind her. The man suddenly pulls Shelley and covers her mouth with a cloth. They bring Shelley in front of Gregory and threaten him that they will murder Shelley if he will still refuses to write a letter. Gregory is mad and wanted to hit them but he can't do anything because his hands are tied up. The man touched Shelley and teased Gregory that he can't do anything if he will touch Shelley in front of him. He removes the cloth covers on Shelley's mouth and ordered her to say a few words but what Shelley did is mock the man while saying your threats are too lame. I guess you haven't succeeded in threatening anyone several times so far. After hearing it from Shelley, the man was furious and hit Shelley with strength causing her to spew blood and fall. He stands in front of Shelley while stating that he will try his cheap threats if it will work or not. Shelley dared him and the man laughed but he was not aware that the cat is already at his back. The cat jumped towards him and leave a scratch on his face. The cat is carrying the amulet of Grey and shouted Grey, I'll leave it to you. There was sorcery happening and all of them wondered what was going on. A minute ago, Grey accompanied Shelley to Gregory's house and they both knew that there was something wrong because it was too dark inside the mansion. Grey offered that they'll go inside and save Shelley's grandpa but she refused since there are several rooms in that mansion and if they can't determine the exact location of her grandpa, they'll be in a passive situation of being intimidated by the hostages. Shelley decided to go alone and asked Grey if he can find a way to follow her. Grey answered that his armor is conspicuous so there was no way to follow Shelley quietly. The only way he thinks to follow Shelley afterward is to let the cat go with Shelley. The cat was annoyed because in his mind, even if he knew the location and ran out to Gray to report, it would be too late. Gray handed his necklace to the cat and stated that he needs to hang this around his neck for a while. It is the disposable amulet he stole from the Great Lick. He instructed the cat that if they will find the place he should slam it to the ground and shout for Gray's name and he can reach with the transmission. 
going back inside Gregory's mansion. The man was shocked after seeing Grey appearing out of thin air in a flash. Shelley now believes that Grey has magic and might have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. In the end, all sins will be cleared and all souls will be ascended. There is no room for a single shadow in every corner where the sun shines. When Grey completely appears in front of them, he stated I am Grey the Knight of the Silver Moon. I hereby sanction you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Angel Catherine is up above the mansion and senses that a messenger of the Holy Spirit usually goes through this route. The men knew that the guy in front of them is the Silver Moon Rider Knight who has been in the limelight. The boss was confident that Grey is alone and even if he's skillful he cannot win the fight. They were all about to take down Grey using their sword but Grey used magic to block all attacks coming to him and his armor is also a great help. He employed strong magic causing them to fly away. The opponents are still assertive in fighting with Grey despite the pain they suffer. Grey is very confident that he will win against them and when the opponent tried to attack him Grey blocks using his armor causing the man's hand to disjoint. Grey casts quadruple tongue binding technique and illuminating beam chain to tie all of the opponents and in the end, they failed their mission ordered by Felder and they are now fully bruised on their bodies. Gregory and Shelley are now safe and Gregory is staring at Grey thinking about how he suddenly appeared and employed the chains that emitted light. No matter how Gregory look at it, he knew that it was definitely magic. The only human in this world who can freely use magic is the Holy Order's paladin so Gregory thought that Iron pulled a favor from the Holy Order. And because of that, he wants to re-examine the Betcher family and Iron's abilities. After the fight, Grey asked Shelley what they should do with these people and Shelley said she will take care of it. She talks to the boss and she knows a lot of every detail about him like his address and his family's background. The man is begging not to hurt his family and stated that his business has nothing to do with them. Shelley is not that kind of person but she informed the man that no matter who sent them and for what purpose they attacked the Gregory family, they have failed so Shelley is offering them two choices. The first one is to identify who sent them to Gregory's mansion and the second is they should pretend that they all die here. The man agreed and told Shelley to keep her word and don't strike out his family. The man paused and suddenly vomit blood causing his people to wonder what happened to him. Shelley put a poison capsule hidden between his teeth and he might bite through it causing him to die instantly. Gregory is soundless while looking at the window so Shelley walks through him and asks what's wrong. They can see at the window that the Betcher family arrived to pick them up so Gregory was impressed by Iron's quick actions and he concludes that Iron ordered her people to follow Felder's messenger. Going back to the Betcher castle study hall, Iron is still investigating Felder but Felder won't say anything about how his messenger entered the White City without Iron's permission. According to Iron, she did not remember that she allowed Felder's messenger. The only thing she recalls is giving thanks to Felder for his guidance. Felder stated that Iron should know the difference between her and her father. According to him, supporting Iron is a huge risk that's why she should be grateful to Felder. I have learned a great lesson Iron stated. After their conversation, Abby Robert and Iron is heading to another room. Robert told everything to Iron that after sending a letter of support to the Betcher family, the old count involved himself in an accident so that the Gregory family would think that the Betcher family is the one who actually did all those things. Iron calmed Robert and told him that striking Felder now would shake the other forces who joined them. Aside from that, Robert informed Iron that Gregory is fine with the help of Grey and he is now in the lounge. When Iron entered where Gregory is, she apologized for being late. Gregory immediately asked if Iron already discussed things with Felder but according to Iron, Felder's explanation was to help her subdue the Gregory family that's why she wasn't able to make a move at this time. She is also worried at the same time because he concludes that Felder might be the king's rat. They are still talking in the middle of the night and Iron informed Gregory that Felder brought his only son Jimmy and Jimmy has snow white hair which is uncommon since they are the only ones in the whole Isaac who have such bloodline in the Betcher family. Gregory immediately surmises that Jimmy might be the bastard son that the king found. Iron couldn't understand as of now why Felder brought Jimmy to White City and the only thing she can do is to wait and watch what unfolds. Felder walks late at night going to another room. When he entered, he immediately saw Jimmy and apologized to him. Jimmy told him that he don't need to be polite since he don't like to hear such things. Tell me what happened that made you come to me for help. Jimmy stated, Felder informed him that the Silver Mood Knight has sabotaged their plans multiple times since the beginning of Port Hamlet. Felder also added that Grey is a strange guy and no one knows where he came from. Grey acts absurdly like a child most of the time but is also very resilient, unmoved by gossip, and very strong with the courage to take on a hundred men. Most importantly, his loyalty to Iron is a very troublesome character. You want to make that Silver Mood Knight accidentally vanish. Fine, I'll help you Jimmy stated and let out his wings together with many bats around the room. After hearing it, Felder was happy that Jimmy will help him this time. There's an angel who discovered that Jimmy is an underage vampire and she asked for approval from the hired to dispose of Jimmy but it was denied and she can only watch and do nothing. 
These angels are guiding White City over deviants and since they discovered a lick and a vampire, Catherine stated that there might be a chance that there will be more and more deviants gathering in this city in the future. The following day, Iron, Gregory, and Felder are talking about how to set up the defensive line. Little Jimmy entered the room as they were talking, and Jimmy along with Felder act like a proud father and son in front of everyone. Jimmy made an excuse that he hadn't played with Felder since they came to White City and as expected, Felder acts and said that he was busy right now so he can play with someone else. Since Jimmy has bad intentions for Grey he stated that he wanted to play with the knight in the white armor and he's pointing to Grey. Afterward, Jimmy brings a lamp and Grey is wondering why they are heading to the underground of the castle. Don't worry, we'll be there soon Jimmy stated. When they arrived, Jimmy welcomed Grey and he thought that no one will bother them in this area. Suddenly, Shelly appeared and said, It's the dungeon of White City, why did you bring us here to play little Jimmy? Jimmy looks devastated after seeing Lady Shelly and he said that he never invited Shelly to come with them. Since Shelly insisted to include her in their games, Jimmy can't do anything but let Shelly play with them. The game is called The Brave and the Dragon. Jimmy told a story that a long time ago, there was an evil dragon living in the dungeon. It kidnapped the princess with white hair who used to live in the White City, which led to the wrath of the people. Eventually, the brave guy emerged and killed the dragon. Jimmy cast the Eye of Illusion causing Grey and Shelly to be out of their mind. Jimmy told them that the two of them are mortal enemies and instruct them that they will fight against each other for the princess as the brave and the wicked dragon. I don't want to be the dragon, can I be the brave guy instead? Grey stated causing Jimmy to be shocked as he thought that he successfully made Grey be hypnotized. Jimmy's magic will work unless his opponent's magical skill is higher than his. Since he thought that Grey is a human, he's wondering why his magic failed with Grey. Jimmy's plan is to make Grey hypnotize but it did work for the cat instead of Grey. The cat is now hysterically mad and wanted to attack Grey as his opponent. Jimmy is wondering what happened to the cat and he comes to the conclusion that his magic doesn't fail, it was just a mishap. The cat keeps biting Grey's armor and Grey is now puzzled about why the cat suddenly freaked out. I'm the evil dragon the cat stated. While Jimmy is wondering, he was scared as he feels something on his back. When he turned around, it was Shelly holding a brick and saying to Jimmy oh, princess, please step back. Jimmy now believes that his hypnosis succeeded and he remembered that when he babbled a story. He said there that the princess is white-haired that's why Shelly is calling him princess. Princess, please stand back. Your brave hero will destroy the abominable evil dragon for you Shelly stated. The cat still acted hyper and wanted Grey to let him go. While Shelly is holding the brick, she smashes it into Grey and Grey is screaming in agony. When Grey passed out, Shelly invited Jimmy to go back to the castle together. But Jimmy was scared and ordered Shelly to not come near him. It is said that deep in the dungeons of White Castle, the screams of a certain teenager echoed all day long. On that day, Iron ordered the doctors to go to the treatment ward and told Grey to explain everything. After what happened, Shelly fall into a coma and even the cat has been unconscious but Grey wasn't sure what's the reason because they only played a little game. Abby Robert told Iron that Shelly and the cat seem to have been afflicted with some kind of black magic, which requires a priest from the church for treatment. If Jimmy is the one who used black magic, Iron is wondering why Grey is not affected so she comes to the conclusion that Grey is a devout believer and has the protection of the Holy Spirit. When the night comes, there's a bat that brings food for Jimmy and this bat suddenly transformed into a little girl. She's Dora, Jimmy's subordinate. Dora called Jimmy Master Jones and since Jimmy heard it, he knew from the very start that it was Dora behind him. Jimmy is still crying after what happened and when Dora saw it, he was irritated and asks Jimmy who bullied him. He told Dora that there was a girl who threatened him with a brick and hugged him in front of the public. Because of it, Jimmy feels ashamed of himself and wanted to make revenge. Jimmy blamed Felder for what happened and he was afraid that his good sister might suspect him. Dora offered him that she can execute anyone including Iron for no reason as long as she gets an order from Jimmy but Jimmy hit her and reminded her that they can't take the initiative to execute people and that was their agreement with those holy spirits. Jimmy was also aware that there might be an angel around the White City watching over them and it would be a disaster if they will be caught. As long as they will not murder anyone, they won't be targeted by those angels. Jimmy already has a plan in his mind on how to get rid of Grey and he ordered Dora to send a message to the king to send his shadow guard troops. Before he go to sleep, he swore that he will revive the Great Blood Race and stated that he is the light of hope for the Blood Race. The next morning, when Jimmy woke up, the first thing he saw is the Silver Moon Knight Grey. He was shocked upon seeing Grey in his room and Grey informed him that Iron ordered him to play and take care of Jimmy. Iron also said that the game they played last time is too dangerous so Grey decided to play a game of family. Let's go out for a walk in the sun Grey stated while he faced Jimmy to the light from the sun. Jimmy shouted and passed out. The road to the revival of the Great Blood Race is a long way to go. Grey called Jimmy a son and apologizes to Jimmy since he's not aware that Jimmy is afraid of the sun. Jimmy told Grey to close the curtain or else something will really happen. 
But little Jimmy, as the son of a knight, you can't stay in your room like this, Gray stated. Instead of being happy, Jimmy was mad and told Gray to get out of his room but Gray can't follow what Jimmy said since he was following Iron's order that he should play with Jimmy for the whole day. Gray still forced Jimmy to go out and take a walk outside and since Jimmy won't listen to him, he beat Jimmy since that is what Iron instructed him. Jimmy was surprised after seeing the hole in the wall made by Gray with just the wind pressure of his fist. Jimmy doesn't have a choice but to ride to Tenitos and go outside the castle with Gray. While they are outside, those kids who set him up saw him and they thought that Gray will scold them but Gray just informed them to not always wander down those alleys to avoid being in danger. These kids are all orphans adopted by the church. And after White City entered a state of readiness for war, the church's finances went into trouble so they were gullible enough to set up Gray for a small profit. Instead of punishing them, Gray donated all his belongings to the church after he knew about everything. We have great respect for you, you are a true knight, said the kids causing Gray to be thrilled. They idolized Gray to the point that when they grow up, they wanted to be a great knight like Gray. Do you really want to be knights? Gray asked them and they answered yes. Because of that Gray told them that they don't need to wait until they grow up. Gray formed a knightly order and let the kids follow him. Let's go to the church and get you commissioned as knights Gray stated. Suddenly, one kid asked about the men wearing armor in front of Gray. Gray introduces Jimmy to them and he told the kids that Jimmy is his adopted son. When they arrive at the church, he said to the priest that he wanted all these kids to be a knight and he needs the priest to be a witness. The priest concludes that Gray is playing with the children so he told Gray that he can be a witness but they need to wait a little while because there's someone praying inside the church. It's the first time Gray has seen someone other than him come to church during his whole time in White City. Gray with the kids is doing a pledging ceremony inside the church and Gray told them that for now, they are all trainees and they'll start the training the next day. This is the path Gray chose for himself and will never regret becoming a knight. Suddenly, the woman in a hood goes near Gray and introduces herself. She's Angel Catherine and Gray feels some strange vibe after he saw Catherine. Although there is a deliberate attempt to hide it, Gray can sense the girl's vibe in front of him and he knows that it is an angel. Gray started to overthink and wanted to escape but Catherine told him that she won't do anything to Gray since Gray is not breaking the law or trying to harm people. After that, Gray needs to leave and the pastor gives thanks to him. Because of him, those kids who were always naughty started to read the holy book on their own initiative. My admiration for you is second only to the Holy Spirit. A pious knight like you should be recognized by the Holy Spirit the pastor stated and asked for Gray's help to apply for the Holy Order's seal of the cross he also added that Gray can continue providing financial assistance. After hearing it, Gray immediately leaves and plans to go to tavern after he will bring back Jimmy to the castle. Afterward, he goes to the tavern for gambling to earn money and give it to the pastor. After he earned a lot of money he's planning to go back to the church but there was an old man asking for money, and since Gray is generous, he gave money to the old man other people saw it and they also asked for money to Gray until it's only two silver coins left. Many days have passed. Jimmy is getting weak inside his room because they do many things with Gray. He was dragged out into the sun to learn how to ride a horse. Gray also let him learn swordplay in the hot sun and they study night novels, dance, and do housework. He also complains that Gray is obsessed with women's clothing. Since he can hold it any longer, he ordered Dora to tell the king to act outright. The day has come, and the king is ready to attack the White City together with his troops. On Iron's side, she's preparing for the battle against the king. Robert informed her that the warrior have assembled so she immediately go at the tower castle. When she arrived, she started to vow in front of the warriors. In the middle of the ceremony, Horace heard some noise behind him and it was the children in the army. Horace was mad and asked for the commander. The commander stated that the children were brought by the Silver Moon Knight and are said to be members of his order. We are the members of the Super Invincible Silver Moon Knights the children stated. In the office of Iron, she asked Gray about the children and Gray said that these kids have a lot of potential. Iron told the children that she needs to talk to Gray first so the children left the room Iron scolded Gray and ordered him to send back the children to the church. Gray insisted that those kids are members of his orders and Iron reminded him that war is a place where they might get hurt or lose their life so it's better to not bring the kids to the battlefield. As long as I am here, they won't get hurt Gray stated causing Iron to be mad and asked Gray if he understand what war is. The battlefield was a pit of unbridled fervor. It's the meeting point of life and death where swords and shadows are intertwined. That is where the knights born in poverty make their names. It is a place where all the knights who crave merit and glory thrive, the sacred ground. When the night comes, Gray is hiding in the stable for too long and he was disappointed for making Iron upset. And Gray was sad because Iron told him to find a place to review his actions. Tenitos is asking how Gray made Iron angry with him and Gray stated that it's not a pleasant memory. Iron told him that the only thing that matters to Gray is his merit and fame. 
She was mad at Grey for involving the kids in their upcoming war and she explained that the battlefield is not a playground, but it means bloodshed and sacrifices where they prevent children from going to war. After hearing it, Grey insisted that those kids are not children anymore and he can protect them on the battlefield. Pyron became mad and told Grey that the moment when knights and the army will be separated. Those kids won't have protection as they have no ability to protect themselves, and only death awaits them. Death is not a terrible thing, is it? You don't have to be so scared. Even if they die, I can make them, Grey stated but was interrupted by Iron because the moment she heard it from Grey she was shocked. After that, he was told to get out and rethink and he was still baffled of why Iron became mad. Tenitos explained the difference between being alive and undead and Grey asked what he should do to understand everything. Tenitos advised him to go to Tavern and use his magic to taste the food and become absolutely addicted. After hearing it, Grey was very excited and wanted to experience what is like to be alive. While they are walking, Grey noticed the old man who asked for money from him. They fought with his wife because of his gambling addiction and he was about to hit his wife but Grey interrupted. The old man recognized Grey and he blamed Grey for giving him a lot of money that he couldn't resist gambling. At this point, the old man asks for more money from Grey and Grey agrees as long as he will not hurt his wife. The lady is crying and told Grey not to give the old man more money because he got his finger cut off due to gambling and she's afraid that the old man might be beaten to death this time. The old man was annoyed and still plead for money and Grey handed him two silver coins but he was disappointed after seeing it. Grey explained that it was all the money he has but the man was irritated and wanted to punch him. Grey is observing the lady and old man with different emotions and Grey was disappointed and blame himself and said to himself that this is not supposed to be like this because it's not the same as the night written in the book. King Beardvai's army has advanced out of the great snowy mountains and they have made their way to the territory of the Duchy of Betcher. The day has finally come. Beardvai is currently stationed across the great river to the west of the White City after half a month of husky marching. He has brought 40,000 troops under his direct command compared to Iron's 20,000 troops. With the supporting troops sent by the nobles from all over the nations, Iron is afraid that Baird Vi will eventually be able to mobilize a full 100,000 troops. Once they let Baird Vi's across the river to the west, they will have no chance to defend themselves. Gregory told her that fighting a war is not just about numbers and to win the battle, they need three elements, the timing, location, and manpower. It happens that it's the rainy season of the Duchy of Betcher so there might be a possibility that the king may not cross the river, therefore he is not advantaged because of the weather. Before the alarm was sounded, Iron sent a people to occupy the high ground on both sides of the western river long before. All they will do is break the bank and before Baird Vi can consolidate, they plan to crush him directly in one blow. This is the best time for them to attack and only by capturing the king alive. Tonight will be a sleepless night and Iron is asking for the help of his two uncles. Abby Roberts informed Iron that Grey didn't show up at the barracks after the alarm went off. At this point, Iron is still mad at Grey and she told Robert that Grey will voluntarily go to the battlefield if he really wanted to. Aside from that, Robert has something to report to Iron. Lady Shelley who had fallen into a coma has awakened and she asked Iron to inform her privately that little Jimmy knows the black magic of manipulating people's hearts and he is most likely not a human. If this is true, then this is no longer just a war between humans, Robert stated which caused Iron to be puzzled. Going back to Grey, he is still in the tavern and people are wondering why he did not go to the castle after the alarm went off. While he was thinking, the cat threw him a fish bone and he was surprised and glad that the cat is already awakened. He shared with the cat about the old man and the cat explained that giving him money is not helping him at all. Grey stated that he only wants to help and comply with his vows but he doesn't understand why it ended in the worst situation. The cat told him that the human world is very complicated and he shows some examples to Grey. He explained that Grey's vow stated that the knight needs to help but he should analyze each situation. Not all help is needed from everyone because it might cause trouble. Grey asked the cat what he should do but they can't answer him and just said that Grey is the only knight who believes in the oath of valor. One day, if Grey fails to gain the respect of others and even his lord starts to question his decision, being a knight will no longer make him happy, instead, it will make him miserable and confused. Now, the war between men is about to begin and Catherine is wondering to Grey if what will he choose. While the Duchy of Betcher is preparing for the battle, the troop hears the sound of a horse's hooves. When it goes near them, they recognize that it was Grey so they let him pass to their area. He looks right away at Lady Iron and goes directly to the highland next to the river valley. Troops are wondering why Grey is in hurry and riding other horses aside from Tenitos. Iron is observing the river and one of her troops told her that the Silver Moon Knight arrived and that something urgent is to report to her. Iron is still thinking that Grey wanted to build his reputation on the battlefield that's why he's participating. The troops bring the Silver Moon Knight in front of Iron and Iron asked what urgent matter he will report but he couldn't utter anything. 
Iron was disappointed and just turned around. Suddenly, the man they thought that the Silver Moon Knight rushed to Iron and stabbed her. Iron was shocked as she thought that Grey betrayed her. The man in armor ordered the troops to burn all the boats and must have no way to cross the river and fight a defensive battle if they really wanted Iron to be safe. Iron realized that she was wrong. It seems like you're not happy about it. It's very easy to impersonate you Silver Moon Knight, the man in armor said. Abby Robert told the man to let go of Lady Iron as they already burned all the ships. He let go Lady Iron and jumps to the cliff then Robert order the troops to catch the impersonators. Iron is suffering in pain so Robert doesn't want to leave her but Iron ordered him to find the real Silver Moon Knight, Grey. Grey is outside the tavern and he's still down for being confused what the real feelings of being alive. The cat advised him to sleep but he said Lick doesn't sleep so it will not work on him. This is something you have to find out for yourself. The cat stated, while they are talking, several troops are hunting him and accuse that he's the one who stabs Lady Iron. Grey was shocked and tried to explain but the troops won't let him and tied him with a chain. They bring Grey to jail and the cat came to inform him of the reason why he was arrested. This matter has caused panic in the White City and no one knows whether it is Grey or the assassin wearing his armor. Grey was mad after hearing that Lady Iron has been stabbed. Suddenly, Iron came and he was explaining that he was the real Grey. Iron is asking Grey to prove that he's the real Silver Moon Knight. How about I give you a dance? Grey stated and after hearing it, Iron realized that he was the real Grey and the cat is wondering how Iron recognized him. Iron released Grey and Grey offered to look for the imposter but Iron refused and ordered Grey to stay in the castle and keep an eye on Felder and little Jimmy. How about the war? Grey asked and Iron answered that he don't need to come and that staying in the castle is her greatest favor to Grey. Everyone knows about what happened and they also know that it wasn't Grey but no one could be sure if it was Grey under the armor. The news has spread among the people. Grey is always wearing his helmet and never revealed his true face so no one could discern his authenticity in the first place. Many people are afraid because of this that's why he wants Grey to stay in the castle and wait for her to come back alive. But my chivalry will not allow me to witness my lord heading off to the battlefield alone. Grey stated causing Iron to be annoyed while saying that she doesn't need Grey's chivalry as it will not help her victory. Chivalry without victory is worthless. Iron stated and reminded Grey to stay in the castle and not run around. After that, Grey goes to Shelly and Shelly predicts that the war against the king will be lost because of the outnumbered troops of Iron. Grey shared with Shelly his confusion and Shelly told him that his chivalry is not meaningless. Grey feels better after hearing it from Shelly. If you have a dilemma in your heart, I'd suggest you visit church since the pastor can answer questions and solve problems, Shelley advised. The pastor is scared of what happened in their city so he wanted to leave the white city. He passed by the walls and ended up having a lump because of the hook he used. While he was standing, Gray is already at his back and he was scared when Gray suddenly speak. The pastor asked what Gray needs and Gray said that he was confused so he liked to seek guidance from him. After hearing it, the pastor invited him to go back to the church. After a while, there is a troop reported that the king has crossed the river. They are crossing the river at a reef-strewn beach, 10 kilometers from Betcher's camp. They are now trying to bring knights and supplies to shore on rafts using militia. Iron started to panic after realizing that the king have no intention of going back so they should not let them land at their camp. Another report came. The king's army has been spotted to the northwest and the men of the Felder family and Casper's men are mutinied and gathering around the king's army. Since Felder is under house arrest, Iron started to think about what he used for ordering his troops. Gregory told Iron to pull back to the White City but Iron refuses because she doesn't want the people of the city to suffer. At this point, she was still positive and decided to go to the northeast to stop Baird Vi from landing. Going back to Grey, he's confessing about his chivalry which he once believed so strongly but now he doesn't know whether he should continue to believe it or not. He had sworn an oath to Lady Iron to guard her against everything but now she ordered Grey to stay in the castle at the most dangerous time. According to the oath, he should have gone to help Iron but he couldn't disobey her order and now he's confused. The knight's oath isn't quite as literal as it seems and he knew that he screwed everything up by strictly fulfilling it. The pastor is guessing that Grey is trying to be a great knight and make everyone accept him as a great knight. He advised Grey that there is nothing in this world that is acceptable to everyone, not even the Holy Spirit. It's normal for you to be confused about this because you can't see the real yet. Real means your heart, your own heart. The pastor said and told Grey that he should obey his own heart. Iron ordered her troops to drive the king's army back to the river and protect the White City. The opponent is already attacking them, especially Iron Berbera. She was already wounded while the king is very confident to fight against her. Iron is very determined to crush Baird Vi and win the battle. At that time, right or wrong, your actions themselves will demonstrate the best interpretation of chivalry. The pastor added and Grey started to think. The pastor informed Grey that the archbishop sent him a message that the king will enter the White City the next day by noon. Grey understand what the pastor said and he added one last question. What's the difference between the dead and the living? 
Gray questioned and the pastor answered him that the undead and the living are not different. What important is the heart, not the identity? Gray started to understand everything and he suddenly asked if the pastor is trying to sneak out because Gray saw him that he jump over the walls. The pastor explained that the king will launch a full-scale attack tonight and Iron's army will not be able to stop it that's why he wanted to follow his heart and survive. After hearing it, Gray was rattled and rushed to Iron because he remembered his oath to protect her from any harm. The pastor wanted to come with Gray. Gray thought that the pastor will also protect Iron but he only wanted to get out to the city and needs help because the walls are too high for him. After they come out to the church, the children are outside and they hear that Gray wanted to protect Iron so they ask to join the battle. Come on boss, this is the time for us to prove ourselves the children stated. The pastor told them that the battle is not a playground so they must go back to bed and just sleep. This time, Gray agreed with the pastor and said that he was not sure he can protect all these kids. They begged Gray and said that they are not kids who need protection but knights who fight alongside him. Gray was thrilled after hearing it and he decided to bring the kids to help the Lord win the war. When they were about to leave, there is a troop who block him and said that he is a traitor. Gray stated that there might be another misunderstanding but the troop was to attack him and Gray this time know how to fight back. You people always attack me without any distinction. Gray said but the troop was confused because they saw Gray stab the dungeon guards, Felder, and Jimmy with his own hands. Gray said that it was not him and it might be the imposter who imitate his appearance. Gray is now mad and decided to get rid of that guy first before he goes to Lady Iron to avoid big trouble. The real Silver Moon Knight is chasing the imposter by himself. Jimmy and Felder ploy about imitating Gray and when they saw Gray chasing them, Jimmy ordered them to execute Gray as soon as possible. The enemy stops at the rendezvous point and the cat is wondering why they stop. Gray concludes that the knight in front of him is the one attempting to pass for him. When Gray questioned the imposter's name, he instantly took off and threw his helmet. There are a lot of heavily armed elite warriors surrounded by Gray at this point and the imposter introduced himself as the captain of the first unit of the king's direct shadow guard or shadow one. When the cat saw the several armies he then asked Gray what they will do. Run straight through Gray answered and started to run right over the enemy and Tanitos strike a surprise attack. Shadow one ordered his guard to line up holding their spear and shield. Tenidos was tormented a lot in the past by this pesky formation but now, it doesn't matter to him. They used a rope to catch Gray but ended up to be failed. Gray is raging like a hurricane and Tenidos spotted the imposter. Shadow One made fun of Gray for depending on his horse and was about to strike when Gray punched him, causing him to fall off and suffer severe agony despite wearing heavy armor. He made the painful decision to recognize his failure and ordered Gray to have him put to death. Gray told him that he won't want to execute anyone. He just wished that Shadow One will apologize to Iron and to the warriors of White City. Little Jimmy was annoyed because the Shadow Guard failed on their mission so he comes out to the wagon. He has reached the limit of his patience and what he wants now is to execute all of these people including Fertile, the guards, and Shadow One. The cat, Tenidos, and Gray witnessed how Jimmy used black magic that directly robs life. Jimmy laughs after seeing Gray witness his true identity. From the beginning till now, Betcher's people thought that it was Baird Vi who wanted to annex the Duchy of Betcher but the truth is it was Jimmy, the descendant of Dracula, the noble blood. You'll go to hell with your pathetic lord and your pathetic chivalry, Jimmy said. A long time ago, while Jimmy is reading a book, Dora interrupted him and informed him that his parents is looking for him. He always runs away from his home and his dream is to have a magnificent castle and conquer the world. He doesn't want to live in a castle that is built on a cliff with nothing to live in. The one he wants is a big castle with a lot of servants. He already planned before that he will go to the human world and then find a human noble with white hair just like him to pretend to be his illegitimate son and after that, he will execute all the noble's heirs so the castle will be him. That is why Jimmy is now in White City and pretended to be the illegitimate son of Iron Berber's father. When Jimmy used his powers to strike Grey, there was a significant explosion and Jimmy believed that everyone had passed away. The cat was still alive and he asks Grey right away if he was okay. Gray's armor has been damaged, but he comes out of the armor with full confidence and used his magic to awaken the warriors. Jimmy was surprised that there is a lick in White City. On Iron's side, she looks so tired and started to lose hope. Their cavalry has been wiped out and less than 2,000 infantrymen remain in their camp. Gregory looks for Gray but he was disappointed after hearing from Iron that she told Gray to stay in the castle. Iron accepts their defeat because there are several left on the king's troops and since Iron decided to give up. Gregory will choose to surrender to the king when the king's army slaughters the White City. At this point, the White City was surrounded by the king's army and people are calling for the Silver Moon Knight. Shelley wanted to go out of the city because she was worried about Gregory. She looks for Grey but the troops told her that the Silver Moon Knight has left the White City with a group of children. Shelley didn't believe it because she knows that Grey isn't someone who would run away from the battle. Iron removes her armor and waits for the king to come. 
on the southern tip of the continent of Celts, in the kingdom of Isaac, an unjust war is taking place. The king will pardon Iron once she will renounce her right to inherit the throne of the house of Betcher. Iron just laughed and the king stated that his vows are trustworthy. What about the vow that the Betcher family took with the royal family when they first pledged their alliance to it? Iron questioned. The king really believes that Iron is not the first heir of the Betcher and said that it should be his brother, Jimmy. Iron knew that the king only want his reputation for his bad deeds. Horace thought that they will still fight together with Iron until the end but Iron stands while saying, This is my last order, drop your weapons and get out of here, please. They are all now in sorrow while dropping all their weapons. Everyone was released from their pledge made by Iron and she was happy that Grey is not with her. She believes that with Grey's ability, he can find a new lord easily. Until now, Iron continues to fight until the very end of her life and the king ordered his soldiers to get ready to attack. Suddenly, someone is shouting saying, Humility, integrity, compassion, valor, justice, and sacrifice. Iron knew that it was Grey who come to save her. There are still those who defy the law to keep their vows for their glory and conviction. The king's army started to panic because they know that Grey is the legendary Silver Moon Knight of the Duchy of Betcher. I, Grey, have pledged allegiance to Iron Berbera and Betcher. All those who will fight against her will be my enemies. All those who harm her will be my enemies. I will fight for her honor to the death. Grey Pledge. Catherine witnessed everything and she was happy for seeing the little naive lick who still remains committed. A moment ago, the pastor admired Grey for taking them out of the city with all the children. While they are hiding, there is cavalry coming to them and the pastor recognized them as not the Knight of the White City nor the King's army. They were surrounded by several armies causing the pastor to panic. The kid told him that it was one of them and they are not enemies. They recognized it because of the coat of arms on their clothes which is the same as the Silver Moon's coat of arms and they knew that it was their boss Grey. Ready to go to war little knights. Grey stated, Grey will bring them all to the battlefields and he brought back armor and war horses. Taking them into the battlefield is an oath he made with the children and a knight never breaks his oath. The king ordered his armies to attack Grey. Grey will not let anyone leave this place until they apologize to Lady Iron. Angel Catherine is observing Grey above and for her. Grey is very strong for an ordinary human, but facing 100,000 men, his magic will definitely run out. It's just that Grey knows that his opponent is invincible yet he's still striving. The cat was amazed at Grey for keeping his oath to the children and Grey stated that he received a revelation from the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit does not need an army of the undead to participate in this war. At this point, Grey is not sure if he can win the battle. What he knew is he can make the king apologize to Iron. The horse is running bumpier so the kid is losing control but Grey told them to believe in themselves. You are all knights of the silver moon. The Holy Spirit will bless you Grey stated. After that, the Holy Spirit blessing emerged to Grey and he feels more powerful this time. The archbishop was shocked after seeing it. It's a miracle that only a paladin can use, a divine blessing. Even the angel Catherine was amazed at Grey. Grey's horses are on fire and the cat began to rattle because he thought this fire will going to put them to death. This is not fire, this is ascension. Everything is a revelation of the Holy Spirit Grey stated. Even Tenitos will fight with the holy light. The king was annoyed after seeing paladin on Iron's command. There is a crowd looking for Grey's battle against the 100,000 armies of the king. All of them are cheering and believing in Grey's ability. And they started to shout, Miracle! When evil grips the earth, there will be heroes clothed in holy light who will come to save the world with the will of the Holy Spirit. Catherine decided to help Grey this time and Grey knew that it was the angel he meets at the church. She gives Grey another magic that can help him win the battle and vanish the fire on the horses. The Holy Spirit is recognizing me. Grey asked and Catherine answered, No, but at least, one angel approved of you. The archbishop recognized the angel and he knew that she was the guardian angel of the paladin. This is a war that is not sanctioned by the Holy Spirit. Everyone is shouting for a miracle once again and the king's army began to freeze. The king ordered them to attack but the archbishop stopped him and he suspect the king was under the influence of the dark forces to wage this war. After hearing it, the king was mad and was about to hit the archbishop but Grey is on his way to save him. He was puzzled and shout to the warriors of the kingdom Isaac that the king has been corrupted by darkness. In the name of the Holy Spirit, I call upon all the pious members of the army to end this unjust war the archbishop stated. King Harper Baird of Isaac's kingdom, in his youth, was a king known for his bravery. He commanded a large army and defeated the invaders from the kingdom of Allen at an absolute disadvantage. It was the battle that made him famous. After that battle, he became the hero of the kingdom Isaac. Countless young men joined his army and became part of the Knights of Golden Armor in order to follow his martial powers. But, there is an end to the legacy of every hero. He ordered again the armies to put down their weapon but they are hesitant because of the oath they made with the king. The oath does not include the practice of injustice. Look in front of you, the holy light, paladin, and the angel. Don't you understand who you are fighting against? It's the Holy Spirit. 
If you insist on fighting, for the sake of the Holy Spirit, I will fight too. The pastor proclaimed. He also revealed that those knights on the battlefield clothed in the holy light, who are fighting bravely underneath their armor are just children. He shouted that they will fight for the Holy Spirit. All the people were astounded after knowing that the knights with gray are only children. People shouted for the sake of the Holy Spirit and the king's army started to surrender as they cannot declare war on the Holy Spirit for the sake of vows. Armies are kneeling and asking for the forgiveness of the Holy Spirit. They all now declared war on the Holy Spirit and the king was mad. All the armies are staring at him causing the king to be scared. They bring the king out to the white city and the battle is finally over. The cat hugs Grey for reaching victory and he told Grey that he was the greatest knight in the whole world. Grey with the children is walking in the aisle going to Iron Berbera and said I'm sorry, I came late and didn't protect you well. Please forgive me. You appeared at the perfect time my knight Iron answered. People were happy after the aim victory with the help of Grey. Late summer of the year 11266 of the fourth age of the elven calendar. The year 10753 of the holy human calendar. During the Battle of the White City, which took place in the territory of the Kingdom of Isaac, the knight named Grey appeared for the first time in the history of mankind. He defeated the 100,000-strong army of King Baird VI by himself, a miracle in the military history of mankind. After the battle, King Baird VI was dethroned and a papal verdict awaited him. Some of the nobles of the Dachai of Becher who were in cahoots with the king were also duly sanctioned. With the full support of the Holy Synod, the holy noble heir of the house Betcher, Iron Berbera Betcher officially inherited his father's title and became the Grand Duchess of the Duchy of Betcher. As for Grey, he received a new title. He became the second earl in the new Duchy of Betcher, besides Earl Gregory. In just a few months, he was promoted from a commoner to an earl by his own merit. His deeds spread to every corner of the continent and he was treated as a role model for knights. He became the ideal of all knights aspired to. In October of the same year, Archbishop Anthony III who was in his 80s, went to the Holy Synod to report the causes of consequences of the Battle of White City. In November, the Holy Synod officially crowned Grey as a paladin. There are only five paladins in the whole continent, and the other four are personally trained by the Pope, leaving Grey as the only exception. Nevertheless, even though Grey was enthroned, he was not summoned, which made many people quite puzzled. Meanwhile, a better struggle for the throne was taking place in the Lion Capital which has lost its king. Baird Vi had twelve children, and the struggle for the throne pitted the children against each other. However, none of this seems to have much to do with the current White City. Everything has been settled down and they are confident that no one will ever dare to attack the Duchy of Betcher because of the Silver Moon Knight and Lady Iron. Since the succession ceremony, people didn't see Iron outside the castle. Horus has spent five days and five nights in order to count the war damage and appease the families of the deceased. Abby Robert has spent seven days and seven nights dealing with the stagnant trade and diplomatic situation during the war. Grand Duchess Iron is feeling like she was about to ascend to immortality after nine days and nine nights of intense activity. Grey has earned Iron's gratitude, and she is hopeful that he won't get into any difficulty. While they are conversing, an army arrived to inform them that the Silver Moon Knight, Grey, has sold the castle to Gregory that Iron gave him and is dispersing gold from the castle tower of White City. They were alarmed when they heard Iron chuckle because they assumed she would become mad. While Grey is dispersing the gold, the cat is scolding him for selling his castle. Lady Iron came and confirmed with Grey if he really sold the castle and Grey answered yes while trembling. Do you need money that bad? Iron asked. Grey explained that he don't need money but the little knights at many people need it and he thought that it would be useless for him to keep the castle. Iron was amazed at his reasons but she requests Grey that she should be the one to take care of the people. Iron decided that she will compensate and reallocate a fief to Grey. Grey was thrilled so he go and hug Iron but his armor hit Iron's head. Everyone was concerned but Iron stated that she was fine. After that, he asked about Grey's plan as paladin and told Grey that it was okay if he wanted to leave in White City to display his skills to the world. Grey said that he don't want to leave. I am a knight of the lady, the lady is my lord, and we have made a vow. I will always follow you, Grey stated which made Iron be happy and she apologized to Grey for insulting Grey's character and chivalry. Because of Grey's loyalty, she will also keep her oath and swear I will pay for your position and ensure that you will not be wronged in any way. On the other side, Angel Catherine encounters the Holy Spirit. The latter learns that she has assisted a lick. Angel Catherine said that due to Grey's belief in the Holy Spirit, it would have finally destroyed itself. He is a knight who upholds the code of chivalry and is prepared to give up everything for the sake of his belief. Catherine has taken it upon herself to pledge to become Grey's guardian angel and she swears in the name of the angelic powers. In December, it snowed heavily in the White City. People who had been busy throughout the year finally got a moment of leisure. They drank warp soup beside the window while admiring a certain paladin who has had fun with snow. Grey received unique treatment from those who he had previously only imagined. He was enjoying the snow when Shelley unexpectedly appeared and offered him for a walk. 
While they are walking, Shelly asked Gray if he's planning to be part of the Betcher family. The cat sensed that their conversation is getting a little dangerous so he stops Gray from answering by himself. Gray was puzzled and the cat told him that he will explain next time. The cat is teaching him what he should reply to every Shelly's question. Gray answered Shelly by saying that he will not join the family but always be a knight of the Betcher family. After hearing it, Shelly confirmed if Gray and Iron has no relationship and Gray answered yes as to what the cat ordered. That means I can be your companion, right? Shelly asked and Gray said yes even though the cat did not say what he should answer. Shelly was thrilled after hearing it while the cat was hysterically annoyed by Gray. A moment ago, Gregory is thinking about Gray and he never thought that Gray is really a paladin. He asked Shelly if she know what it means but Shelly doesn't have any idea. Gregory believes that Gray doesn't belong to any family as he doesn't have a last name so he told Shelly that it would be nice if Gray will become a member of Gregory's family. That's why now, he's inviting Gray for a blind date. He advised Gray that it doesn't have to be formal, he just needs to go shopping and bring something to Shelly. Gray doesn't understand everything but he's willing to accompany Shelly since his job that Iron gives him is only to patrol the streets of White City and help anyone who needs it. They started to go out on the same day. They go shopping, they go sightseeing, and they both eat. Shelly recommends a berry sundae and Gray is drooling but he doesn't know how to eat it. Suddenly, someone came and called Shelly. She's Eliza Clara Fernandez, Duke Fernandez's eldest daughter. They greeted each other and Eliza teased Shelly that her behavior is like a child running on the street alone. Shelly immediately introduces Gray as her companion. After that, Eliza leave and advised Shelly to be careful with her words and actions. Because of their matrimonial relationship, the Gregory and Fernandez families have a close relationship. Therefore, it is accurate to say that the girls grew up together. They usually play together when they are kids. They were so close until one day, Shelly praised Eliza's dress but Eliza is not happy with it. She's frustrated because she can't be the same as before like a normal kid does. The adult says that only through strict education and etiquette can they can show the families of burning dignity. Whether the skirts are gorgeous, whether the words are appropriate or not, these are all part of the inner grooming of a girl. From then on, Eliza became an aristocratic girl through and through. She was beautiful, elegant, and charming at the balls like a gorgeous, fragile ornament. Shelley knew that Eliza's life is boring. She doesn't want to be like Eliza in the future, to become a prestige symbol for the family, and eventually marry a man he never met for the sake of reputation. That kind of person is really not interesting to her. After they go out, Gray took Shelly home and Shelly admired Gray for being an incredible person. She wanted to share her personal problems with Gray but she's afraid that she will only be a bother to him. The next day, there's an urgent report to the Duchy of Betcher from the Lion Capital. The unrest in the royal capital ended the day before yesterday, and Prince Benedict finally seized the throne. He had issued a royal decree inviting Grand Duchess Betcher Earl Gregory and Paladin Gray to participate in his enthronement ceremony. Gray doesn't understand a thing so the cat told him that there might be something big to happen and even Gregory doesn't have any idea why he was also invited. Iron ordered her people to get ready to go to the lion's capital. When the night comes, little Jimmy together with Dora is still alive and Dora were alarmed after seeing Gray. Don't be nervous, it's me, Gray said but Dora answered, I'm more nervous because it's you. Jimmy is wondering why Gray visited him and he thought that he will be executed. Gray doesn't want to execute Jimmy but he only came to deliver armor. Jimmy was puzzled and Gray told him that his angel Catherine said that Jimmy's action for assassinating a whole army of humans is a serious violation of the agreement between the Holy Spirit and the Blood Clan and she has all the right to obliterate Jimmy. But Gray pardoned Jimmy using his privilege of a paladin, on the condition that Jimmy must follow up until his sins will be redeemed. Jimmy asked Gray if he was just pity on them and Gray answered, No, I just think that if a lick can become a paladin, then a vampire must be eligible too. They are both now part of Silver Moon's order and Grey will bring them to the Lion Capital. In January of the 10,754 Holy Human Calendars, the new Grand Duchess of Baser Iron set out on a journey to the Lion Capital with Paladin Grey. In the middle of their journey, they were caught in a fog and Robert suggests that they should rest in the village ahead. Grey was out of his mind the whole time and he sensed a little strange about the fog. While they are standing, someone is calling for Grey and the moment he hears it he knew it as Lord Iron Berbera. When Iron is already visible, Gray sensed that Iron's armor has changed. Suddenly, Iron tried to attack him and he wondered what was going on. I don't need you anymore, so please just disappear, Iron stated and strike an attack on Gray. The cat told him that Iron is trying to execute him so he should assassinate Iron with a counterattack. The cat keeps on saying that the war of the Duchy of Betcher is over so Iron doesn't need him anymore and she must have a grudge against Gray. Gray doesn't believe and he knew Lady Iron is not that kind of person. The cat screamed and ordered him to fight back but Grey wanted to keep his vow to Lady Iron. He don't want to hurt her. 
Iron laughs at him for believing a vow. She then attacks Grey and slashes Grey's head armor. Now, they can see the true face of the paladin under its armor. Iron laughs once again after discovering that the paladin who was personally ordained by the Holy Spirit is undead. It gives her more reason to execute Grey. The troops also attack Grey which made his armor to be damaged and Iron is not satisfied. He then hit Grey's arm and is what she expects. The undead is really more fragile than she thinks. The cat is now mad because Grey doesn't want to fight back. Since you respect your vows so much, then I command. Go to hell, Iron said. Since Grey sensed that Iron really wanted to put him to death. He then opens his cloth and said, attack me here. As soon as my soul fire goes out, I will disappear completely. The lady was mad after hearing it and according to Grey. It was against the agreement of the Grey Robs to do something to him without permission. Grey cast magic and he knew that this lady in front of him is not real Iron Berbera and he will not allow anyone will insult his lord. Suddenly, someone taps him, it's Lady Iron and they were shocked after seeing her. According to Iron, Grey just stood still and didn't respond even when Iron called her. Grey didn't tell her exactly what happened and he just asked about the fog. Iron concludes that Grey has been exhausted that's why he fall asleep on the horse and had a dream. Grey was still puzzled and he don't know what was going on. In the middle of their marching, there are two demons observing Grey and they are the reason why Grey was out of his mind. They wanted Grey, the Lick Paladin to fall and reveal his own identity on his own, and they are also aware that Grey has a guardian angel which is Angel Catherine. The moment they arrive to the next village, Angel Catherine goes to him to tell some good news and bad news. Grey wanted to hear the good news first and Catherine said that the Holy Spirit has approved her as Grey's guardian angel. From today onwards, Grey is officially recognized by the Holy Spirit as a paladin. The bad news is, Grey should not reveal his identity. Once he'll be exposed and subjected to the crusade of mankind, the angels will completely disassociate themselves from Grey. If Grey can reveal his identity without being attacked by humans, then everyone will be happy. Catherine thought that Grey will be sad after hearing it, but in the end, Grey has no reaction since he was used to hiding his true identity. When Grey was about to leave, Catherine sensed a scent of a demon on Grey. She then concludes that Grey has been afflicted by a demon spirit. Grey claims that the person posing as Iron is a demon and that he is fully aware of this. He also claims that it is not as powerful as he is. Angels, demons, and liches have a non-interference agreement, according to Catherine. Demons refer to it as the Grey Robes Agreement. The Grey Robes Agreement states that demons will not physically harm paladins but they will manipulate and tempt paladins. Grey is certain that no matter what the temptation is, he will not be defiled by them. Angel Catherine warned him that his next opponent might actually be a human being. As Grey is already aware of the existence of demons, they won't approach him anymore. Instead, it will be a human being. They will pose as humans in order to attack Grey. There is never a shortage of self-sacrificing demon envoys in this world. Unlike Paladin, demon envoys have no magic power. Angel Catherine warned him to be aware of anyone who will approach him with a malevolent purpose because they appear so different from ordinary humans. The Duchy of Betcher arrives at the Lion Capital Kingdom of Isaac and the crowd is cheering for the Paladin, Grey. Others even idolize him and wanted to become like him. The new king of the Kingdom of Isaac, Lord Sharp Benedict was happy seeing the Paladin arrives in his kingdom. Iron and Grey kneeled in front of the king and greeted King Benedict. As of now, Benedict is not the official king yet but he will be crowned in a few days and this is the reason why the Majesty has asked the Paladin to witness his enthronement ceremony. Iron also informed the Majesty that Grey is also an Earl of the Duchy of Betcher aside from being the Paladin and Grey is still his subject and will bow to him. A Paladin with an Earldom is a bit too low. The Majesty stated which made Iron annoyed but what she can do is agree with the king. After welcoming the Duchy of Betcher, there is a ball to welcome the kingdom's heroes. Grey was amazed after entering the king's palace. Grey is wondering what the king said about being Earl of the Duchy of Betcher and the cat explained that the king doesn't think it is bad. Instead, he thinks Iron is not qualified to be Grey's lord. Grey disagrees with it because for him, Iron is a good lord to him. The cat sensed that the king's attitude towards Iron is so obvious that one can see it even with closed eyes. After hearing it from the cat, he then concludes that the king is a demon envoy that's why he's somehow targeting Lady Iron. He was about to beat the king but Angel Catherine stopped him and reminded him that an enjoy is definitely a bad guy. But every bad guy isn't necessarily an envoy. Listen, you are now a paladin. And your actions represent the holy order and the holy spirit. The angel stated, Benedict is the king, the ruler of this country, and he represents the kingdom of Isaac. Once Grey will rashly make a move against him, everyone will speculate whether it is direct from the holy spirit. Once the king will be found innocent, Grey's action would mean that the holy spirit has declared war on a sinless nation. That's the way human society is. Angel Catherine added that even if the king is really a demon envoy, Grey should not take direct actions. Just like Grey has his helmet, the demon envoy has the mask of a king. When he took off the mask, he is a demon envoy. 
When he put on the mask, he is the king. Gray can only sanction him righteously by pulling off the mask of the demon envoy and letting everyone knows that he is the demon envoy. After hearing it, Gray understands everything and his goal is to rip the mask off the king's face. When the night comes, people are gossiping about Iron and the paladin and they conclude that Gray and Iron are lovers that's why Gray is working for Iron obediently. At that moment, King Benedict welcomes the arrival of the delegation from the Duchy of Betcher and invites the new Grand Duchess of Betcher to perform the first dance. Gray was alarmed after seeing Iron with the king and he thought that Iron is leaving him for fun. You can't always rely on your lady Iron. You must learn to fend for yourself, the cat stated. Since Gray wanted to dance, he looked for his partner which is Shelley. He goes directly to Shelley and many girls introduce themselves as they wanted to have a dance with Gray. And they get to the point that they are fighting each other. Gray was scared but the cat was happy seeing how popular Gray is. While he was looking at the girls, someone grabs his arm and several wanted to pull him onto the dance floor. Gray was dizzy seeing them and he shouted that he wanted to dance with Shelley Gregory. Shelley was shocked and the crowd was confused about who Shelley is. Other girls recognized Shelley who came with the delegation of the Duchy of Betcher and the daughter of an earl. While Gray is calling Shelley, all girls are staring at her. Sir Knight, do you have a feud with me? Shelley stated while she was rushing and pulling Gray to the dance floor. They both do reverse dance while the crowd is staring at them. While they are dancing, the king and Iron are also watching them and Iron was timid of Gray's action. The king noticed that Grey is always wearing his armor so he was curious if anyone already sees his face. The king laughed and stated that no matter what Grey looks like, girls will be attracted to him. Don't you think so, Grand Duchess Betcher? The king asked. Iron doesn't understand what he means and the king invited her to talk somewhere else. They go to a room where no one can hear them and the king asks Grey to be his subordinate. He ordered Iron to break her vows with Grey and have him swear his allegiance to the king. Iron told him that this is not something she can decide laterally and the king forced her to give up Grey. He offered Iron to have a prosperous territory from him but still, Iron answered the same thing. Don't be a stubborn girl. Grand Duchess Betcher, don't you want to possess that knight once and for all? The king proclaimed. Iron doesn't understand what he means and the king thought that she's just pretending to be confused by reasoning about the difference between black and white. According to the king, a knight on a horse with an angel, clothed in holy light, facing an army of 100,000 men alone just to rescue the only girl in his heart is such a romantic story. Iron was really mad at the king but she did not let it out. You dare to say that your heart has not been moved? Everyone sees you and him as a pair. Yet you're saying that you really don't want to possess him and make him a knight only for you. The king stated, As the only lord of the house of Betcher, Iron cannot marry Grey. And as a paladin recognized by the Holy Synod, Grey can't marry into the Betcher family. Otherwise, the reputation of both of them will be tarnished. The king reminded Iron that she can only be the paladin's master and servant. The king educates Iron that after the Battle of White City, the royal prestige hit rock bottom. The kingdom of Allen has begun to move, but many of the royal troops no longer obey the king's order. If the kingdom of Allen invades, Iron is willing to stand by the king but King Benedict told her that he doesn't need any promise. What he needs is a paladin with direct allegiance to him, especially a paladin who has no roots in this country. If it happens that a paladin will propose to Iron, the paladin will get fame and status, and Iron will get the knight he loves but the king will get a strong reign. On the other side, Grey and Shelley are done dancing but the girls are still staring at them. Without the king's acquiescence, these reserved noble ladies wouldn't dare to be so blatant. In other words, Shelley is taking the bullet for Sister Iron. Shelley thought that Iron ordered Grey to dance with her but Grey cleared everything that Shelley is the only one who thought him how to dance and he's also afraid that he will look like a fool by dancing with other people. Lord Gregory is an old fox. He annexed seven families without bloodshed and according to the king that the reason why Gregory helped Iron in the Battle of White City was that he saw the connection between Grey and the church. As long as Gregory is alive, it will be difficult for Iron to control the real power of the Duchy of Betcher. That is the reason why the king invited him to the Lion Capital and the king offered Iron that he can help her control Gregory. Shelley informed Grey to not accept any girl's invitation to dance other than Iron because according to her, this is a test of the king. He is trying to see if he can take away Grey from Iron. Grey has no idea about the king's intention so Shelley informed him that during the Battle of the White City, the royal family's prestige suffered significantly while the clergy's prestige improved massively. The king would undoubtedly make an effort to entice the papacy in order to stabilize his regime. As a paladin who shone on the Battle of the White City, Grey is now the best symbol of the Holy Lord. The Holy Synod has experienced some degree of success as a result of the religious reformation that the paladin and the Duchy of Betcher spark. They will now focus on the entirety of Isaac's realm. To implement the reformation throughout the kingdom, paladin is necessary according to the king. What Grey and Shelley talk about is the same as what the king and Iron discussed. The Holy Synod will designate Grey for it. 
according to Shelley, Grey will undoubtedly be asked to leave Iron and swear allegiance to the King of the Holy Synod who wants to strengthen the role of religion in this nation. Grey doesn't like the king and he was about to tell Shelley that the king is a demon envoy, but the cat stopped him and informed him that he should not involve ordinary people in such dangerous things. Grey was confused if the Holy Spirit really wanted him to leave his Lord Iron Berberet. The Holy Spirit rarely gives specific orders. They prefer believers to think for themselves. But there is no doubt that the Pope is doing this for the Holy Spirit as well according to Angel Catherine. Grey now believes that the Holy Spirit doesn't want him to break his vow. What is more important now is the demon among them. While Catherine is guiding the paladin, she's not aware that demons are behind her and just watching her. The next day, Gregory goes to Iron's room and he concludes that Iron hasn't slept for the whole night. Gregory told Iron that four days prior, there had been word of an odd army movement in the Allen Kingdom. Duke Downers opposed the king's request to send troops to the border swiftly. This was a piece of news 15 days ago but it was blocked and did not come to light until four days. The royal family's standing has reached an all-time low, and the monarch is currently in dire need of assistance. He must be attempting to win the Holy Synod's favor given how closely he has been working with the church lately. But, the Holy Synod will not get involved in a nation's internal affairs, and Gregory expressed concern that it would target Grey or Iron directly. Gregory's analysis makes sense according to Iron and she informed Gregory that the king already had a showdown with her. Gregory was aware that the king is trying to steal Grey from Iron so he immediately looks for Grey. Iron said that the archbishop invited Grey to church service early in the morning. Gregory was annoyed with Iron for comfortably letting Grey go to church alone because he knew that the church has been in collusion with the king for a long time. Don't worry, it'll be fine. And, he is not alone. Iron said, at the Pierce Cathedral, Shelley and Grey are going to church and Grey was amazed after seeing the huge church in front of them. Grey is happy that Shelley is also in the church. He was not aware that Iron came to Shelley last night and requested her to accompany Grey to church. Shelley was not happy about it because, for her, it will be another bullet to take to Iron again. While they are outside, the pastor called Gray. Pastor Dean is also here in the Lion Capital and he was happy after seeing Gray. Gray give thanks to the pastor for his help to enlighten Gray and teach him to be true about his heart. After hearing it, Shelley realized that Gray follow her advice to talk to the pastor about his confusion. The archbishop is waiting for them outside the church and the archbishop greeted the paladin and Gray did the same thing as well. The archbishop thought that Shelley is the Grand Duchess Betcher because he invited Iron to the service with Paladin and he expected that Iron will also come. Shelley introduced herself and informed the archbishop that she's Iron's spokesperson. The archbishop's subordinate didn't trust Shelley but he still let Shelley go inside with them as she believes that Shelley has no bad intentions and is only present as the spokesperson of Lady Iron. Going back to the palace, Gregory was very mad after knowing that Iron pushed Shelley into the limelight. The king wanted to use the emotional card to get her to persuade Grey and the church meant the same thing. She will not interfere and let Grey choose for himself. According to her, Shelley is a perceptive girl and knows how she should help Grey to deal with the words of those foxes. After explaining, Gregory was still mad and can't accept that Iron pushing his 16 years old granddaughter Shelley into the fire. Iron was aware that Gregory wants Grey to be a member of the House of Gregory. Since you want such benefits, you must take the corresponding risks, right? Iron said, if Iron will transfer Grey to the king because of her own personal feelings, the matter itself would be a betrayal of Grey and of the oath. When Grey entered the church, he was very surprised by the runes on the wall as he can feel the magic from it. The cathedral of the capital is not just for prayers and worship. It is also in charge of the entire diocese so there are many clergymen stationed here. Naturally, the standard is superior to other places. While they are observing, Shelley saw a fresco, and the archbishop was alarmed after knowing that Shelley has knowledge about it. Shelley stated that it was Abbotsel, a holy man who was executed by a mob thousand years ago. A devoted saint, Abbotsel, promoted a radical kind of religious reformation that worried the aristocracy and the common people of his time. The Holy Synod had no choice but to give up on trying to safeguard him after weighing the circumstances. Even the mention of his name was taboo for a while. It wasn't until many years had passed and the incident had been forgotten that the Holy Synod was able to redeem himself. The Pope included his deeds in the history of the Church as a warning to future generations. This painting was painted by the Pope's order and is authentic. Shelley keeps asking the Archbishop and the Archbishop was irritated because he sees Shelley deliberately trying to speak in a sarcastic manner. On the other side of the alleyway of Lion Capital, there are two old men talking about the Paladin and suddenly, they saw something that appeared quickly but they conclude that it was just an illusion. They did not know that it was an angel. Angel Catherine is trying to find the evil Zora, but she is hiding it, making it difficult for Catherine to find her. The evil communicated with Catherine via telepathy, and as long as Catherine will claim that she can't find the evil, the evil will eventually appear. 
I admit it, I really have no way to trace you, Catherine stated and evil appeared in front of her. She's Vivian the Phantom. Catherine was frightened after seeing her which made her fall. She also accused Vivian that she was the attacker of Grey and impersonating Lady Iron but Vivian denied it and told Catherine that she has been transferred to her duty just recently. Catherine was puzzled after hearing it and she asked Vivian what she wants. Of course, to become the guardian demon of our little lick, Vivian answered. Catherine was mad after hearing it and she ready herself to attack but Vivian teased her and said, Do you want to shatter the truce with the demon realm as the representative of the celestial realm? Which made Angel Catherine more annoyed. The Holy Book in Chapter 46, 12 says that the Holy Spirit favors the world. The Holy Spirit sends its most trusted angels to earth to assist the most devout believers and make them clergy. Thus, because of the foolish taste of the world, the Holy Ones had to condescend to themselves and accommodate the world. Everyone who receives the favor of the Holy Light has the duty to do whatever it can to convey the love of the Holy Spirit to as many people as it can. Shelley keeps on asking the Archbishop and Grace sensed a bad atmosphere between them. According to the Church, a paladin should follow the teachings of the Holy Spirit, take care of the mission of the Church, and preach the divine faith as his duty. But Shelley argues with it and as for her, paladin should uphold the teaching of the Holy Spirit's knighthood, follow the oath of allegiance, and make it their duty to promote the benevolence of the Holy Spirit. Shelley questioned what statement was appropriate for Grey, but he was unable to respond. The cat advised him to seek his guardian angel for clarification but according to Grey he has been cut off from Angel Catherine since last night and he doesn't know where Catherine is. The cat ordered him to not answer to avoid offending both sides so Grey apologized to them and said, I think I need to go back and think about this question before answering it. Is that okay? Both Shelley and the Archbishop were puzzled. No, I mean, don't you want to play a greater role in our great cause of spreading the faith? The Archbishop asked but Grey answered that it's something he has to think about. Shelley laughs while the Archbishop still wonders why Grey needs to think about such a question like this. According to Grey, as a paladin, his every word and action represents the Holy Spirit and he must be careful about it. The Archbishop was confused at this point and since he don't understand what Grey wanted to point out, he just told Grey to go back and consider his words carefully and he will wait for Grey's answer. Because of it, they finally come out and Grey asked why Shelley is arguing with the Archbishop. Shelley reminded him that the Archbishop is beating around the bush. He wants Grey to leave Lady Iron to serve the king. Shelley is complaining about waking up early in the morning to accompany Grey so Grey offered her that they can go shopping and eat together after they can go back to the White City. After hearing it, Shelley assumes that Grey is proposing a date to her so he feels pity for Iron. While they are talking outside the church, the Archbishop is observing them and he was curious about Paladin's relationship with Shelley. The pastor told him that Shelley and Grey are always close when they were in White City. He also added that the Grand Duchess of Betcher doesn't care about being a master for Grey for the rest of her life, nor care about Grey being with another girl. After hearing it, the Archbishop said that it will be a problem for them. They have a paladin with great prestige and power, but the Holy Synod knows nothing about Grey and the person close to Grey is also a female Grand Duchess who has a problem with the royal family. If the Pope himself gives the order, it means that they have no control over the paladin that they have nominated. The Archbishop ordered the pastor to find a chance to talk to Grey to convince him. Going back to Shelley and Grey, they said goodbye to each other and Shelley has a feeling of wanting to lock Grey and pet him or the feeling of guarding someone. She stopped her feeling and right now, it's enough for her to play the role of the closest girl to Grey and stop the king from taking advantage of the situation. Grey is heading somewhere. When he arrived he was surprised to see Dora, little Jimmy, and Angel Catherine together with a demon, Vivian. Grey attacks her using a sword but she was emotionless and asks Catherine if Grey has a fondness for throwing flying swords. You can get angry and just resign, Catherine answered. Grey carries the cabinet and throws it to Vivian. He was very giggled to fight the demon but Vivian keeps running away. Demon, don't run, if you dare, Grey said which made Vivian stop. Grey struck a punch at Vivian but he ended up punching Catherine because Vivian dodged his attack. Grey apologizes to Catherine and Catherine ordered them to calm down. Grey was very determined to subdue the demon but Catherine told him that they can't do it because the celestial realm and the demon world have signed a truce. You can't attack me without breaking the agreement, Vivian stated. Grey wondered why there is an agreement between them and for him. It's better to fight the forces of evil to the end instead of making pacts with them. Vivian is offering herself to be Grey's guardian demon but Grey refused right away. Grey, don't be so quick to refuse, Catherine said. Vivian has been raised in the demon world and doesn't know the meaning of goodness. She has appeared before Grey and this is the opportunity given to her by the Holy Spirit and the test given to Grey, according to Vivian. It is not written in the holy book that a lick cannot become a paladin but Grey is indeed a paladin now. No one says that demons can't defect to the light so she told Grey that there is an opportunity for Grey to convert into a demon. Seems to make some sense, Grey stated. 
and the cat told him not to believe Demum Vivian because it was a trick. He reminded Grey that he went to the light for faith and Vivian came near the light only to attempt him to fall. Vivian used his magic to control the cat and she knew that this cat is possessed by ghosts. I should remind you, Kitty, demons have an agreement with angels and witches and demons, but not with ghosts, Vivian said which made the cat scared and agree with her that a true paladin should convert into demon. Angel Catherine interferes to remind the cat that the angels and ghosts don't have any agreement also. At this time, the cat was unsure of his position and frustrated that he was taking part in such a life or death game when all he wanted was to be a simple, trustworthy cat, whose cat is screaming in the early morning. The citizen shouted. Grey was encouraged by Angel Catherine to let Vivian stay because they can't get rid of her. For Catherine, it's preferable to keep Vivian hidden from them than to be unsure of her whereabouts. At this point, Grey agreed to let Vivian stay with her as long as she made a pledge not to intentionally hurt anyone. Like Dora and Jimmy, who despite being vampires, only consume pig's blood at this time. Pig blood is delicious, Jimmy stated. From now on, Grey accepts Vivian as his guardian demon. He signed their agreement and told Vivian that she should act together with Grey. Prayer before eating. Worship in church with Grey every weekend. And also attend Catherine's lecture every night and receive lessons in the divine faith. Vivian's ultimate goal is to tempt Grey to fall and Grey's goal is to convince Vivian to ascend. Vivian said that the Holy Spirit might be mad if Vivian will go to church and Grey cleared that there are no rules of who can go to church, even his cat, Tanitos. And these two vampires also worship together with him and the Holy Spirit is happy with them. According to Catherine, the Holy Spirit would be pleased if a demon would accept the baptism of the Holy Light. Now, do you want to join our warm family? Grey asked and Vivian think until she decided to say yes. At the Lion King's palace, the king heard that the archbishop couldn't convince the paladin. According to the archbishop's subordinate, the paladin seems to be a bit resistant to their proposal. The king was mad and there are only two days left until his enthronement. If the archbishop doesn't manage to announce paladin's allegiance to the king at the same time he put on the crown, he will not support the church reformation. Now go back and tell your archbishop that I have given him only two days, the king declared. While Susan and the king were together, she gave the king advice to be patient, much like the crown. Benedict doesn't want to wait much longer after they spent years waiting for him to be crowned. He was concerned about Iron Berberus since he was aware that Iron is a smart girl with a grudge towards the royal family and have the strongest paladin in the nation and have enormous popularity. He worries that Iron may have aspirations on taking the throne. At the stable, an equestrian is curious about the paladin's horse who fights with a stud. They were amazed about Tenitos can kick over a couple of hundred knights on its own in the battle. They thought that Tenitos is fighting with the horse in this stable and they were frightened that the king's horse might be in danger. They didn't know that Tenitos is only sharing about his faith in the holy light and he was disappointed that he was the only horse who worships. From now on, you must worship every Sunday, and you must pray before eating grass, understand, Tenitos said in a horse language. While all horses are talking, the stable boy named Bob wondered what they are doing. On the other side, a drunk man saw Vivian sitting in the alley. He is eyeing Vivian's breasts and legs before approaching her and inviting her to his home, bragging that his bed is huge and warm. Vivian knows the man's intentions and because of her anger, she hit the man using the holy book. I am only defending myself without breaking any vows, she stated while rushing to the man and punching him using knuckle. Angel Catherine gives them the assignment to recite for their next lesson day. She was struggling to memorize it and she was irate because he was interrupted by this man. The next day, Vivian passed the test because she memorized the holy book all night. It's no use just memorizing it. Let's go out and spread the holy faith, Vivian stated. While they are talking someone knocked on the door and when Grey opened it, it was King Benedict. He quickly shuts the door and accuses Vivian of plotting against the king, and Grey comes to the conclusion that the king is the demon envoy. The king is perplexed as to why Grey did not welcome him, so he questioned his companions if they had ever witnessed a guy eject a monarch. Grey checked again and still feels completely off and since the king wanted to talk to him, he decided to open the door without Grey's permission. He invited Grey to watch the knights play with him and Grey accepts his invitation so he will be able to understand whether the king is a bad guy or not. When they are watching, Grey is very chatty while his guardian angel and devil are also enjoying the play. Grey was very happy watching the plot of a knight's guide to success. And the king knew that Grey will be happy with it. He also brings the author of the book named Turtle to make Grey more satisfied and earn his trust. Grey was very thrilled at this point and Turtle doesn't know that he was the paladin. The king ordered Turtle to write a novel specifically for him, a novel based on Paladin Grey. Really, is it possible? Grey said. On the other side, there are 34 invitations to Iron from other families. Gregory concludes that all the nobles with weight throughout the Lion Capital are on the move, and the Duchy of Betcher has become the center of the whirlpool. Robert said that it's not just the Lion Capital, but the entire Kingdom of Isaac. 
almost all the invitations are focused on the time before the king's enthronement ceremony. And none of the invitations include the royal family in the invitation list. This is the sign of the event of a storm. If I was not sitting here, I would have handed you an invitation too, Gregory said which made Iron wonder. It's their way to test Iron's attitude, to see if she wants to guard the throne or if she wants to take revenge on the crown. What will you do? Do you want to remain loyal to the royal family or do you want to pull him down from that position and become the king of this country yourself? Gregory asked. Author Turtle is willing to make a novel for Grey by the order of King Benedict. Since Grey would love to share his story, he told Turtle that it will be about a lick who became paladin and was discovered by the Holy Spirit. Author Turtle stopped him and clarified if Grey means that there was a lick pretending to be a knight and was welcomed by all but burned to death by the Holy Spirit. Grey corrected him that the Holy Spirit recognized it and canonized it as a paladin. Author Turtle was puzzled but suddenly became annoyed because he thought that Grey is just joking around. According to him, this kind of thing cannot happen even within the wildest imagination. No one wants to see a wicked lick pretending to be a good guy all day long and then becoming a paladin, Turtle stated. Going back to the palace, Gregory advised Iron that if it happens she possesses power, people instinctively fear and become suspicious of her. The first thing Benedict did after his succession was to prepare a program to reduce taxes and now working to repeal some of the unjust laws of the old days. While Gregory is talking, he noticed that Iron is not listening to him. A hero cannot fight against kindness, Iron stated. She's thinking about the paladin. The paladin is the hero who comes out of the holy light and swings his sword at the darkness. But a hero's sword cannot be pointed at a kind king. Iron suddenly ordered Robert to refuse all the invitations and just reason out that she was not well enough. Gregory was puzzled as he doesn't have any idea what Iron will do this time. Going back to Grey, the cat punched him many times for telling Turtle that the story he wants is about the lick who became a paladin. Even Angel Catherine said that there was something wrong with what he have done. Grey knew exactly the concerns of the cat and Angel Catherine. It's just that there are a lot of people who trusted him and he knew that it was not right that he keeps lying to them. He remembered that the Holy Spirit said, if he can make it without even being crushed by humans with his identity exposed, it will truly accept him. He's hoping that one day he can take his helmet and confidently stand before these people with his truest face. His greatest dream is to be accepted by the people in this world. Angel Catherine got the point of Grey that he will take the initiative to unmask himself, reveal his true face, and stand in the sunlight. She knew that it was a good idea but she was worried. While she was explaining to Grey, Vivian interrupts her and said, If a paladin can't even stand up in the sunlight, what right does he have to call himself a paladin? Angel Catherine was mad at Vivian for encouraging Grey because they all know what will happen once Grey take off his helmet in front of the people around him. Angel Catherine invites Vivian to talk privately. Catherine is accusing Vivian of inducing Grey to reveal his identity but Vivian stated that he only supports the paladin's idea. For Catherine, Grey is just only a child, a child that doesn't know anything and doesn't have any idea about the consequences. According to Vivian, Catherine knows that Grey is only a child but she's luring the uninitiated into a path she wants Grey to take, to wear him out. It is only a pity that his faith is not quite the same as the faith that Catherine wishes to be. What he believes in is not the Holy Spirit but only a dream, a dream that he imagines by himself. Vivian also concludes that Catherine wants Grey to wear his armor forever to be immersed in a dream as a paladin. They both know that people wake up one day from the most beautiful dreams. The Holy Spirit isn't what Grey thinks it is, and the so-called faith is not absolutely beautiful. One day, Grey will open the veil with his own hands and come out of the beautiful dream that Catherine has woven. When that time comes, whether he continues to be a paladin or turns back into the original lick, one of Catherine and Vivian will win. Catherine is worrying about Grey and she's hoping that Grey will see the warm light instead of sinking into darkness. Grey is with the king strolling around. The cat suddenly asked if he really wanted to reveal his skeleton body to Iron and to other people around him. This is only a goal for Grey but he's hoping that he will get there one day. As long as he stands firmly on the side of justice, it will never be wrong for him to continue carrying out the spirit of knighthood. The king was happy at the theater but now, he sensed something strange and suddenly lost. What really his goal is to make Grey feels that they're soulmate and that as long as he can control the paladin, all his problems will be solved. The king and the paladin have returned to the city and they directly go to the stable to leave their horses. At the palace, while Shelley is walking, she saw Pastor Dean and she knows that the pastor is looking for Grey. Since the pastor didn't see Grey in his room, Shelley conclude that Grey must be roaming outside the palace since Grey is not someone who could stay put all day. When the king and Grey are already outside the stable, the troop is calling a stable boy to assist the horses. The one who comes out is only Bob and everyone was shocked because they know it will turn into a big problem. When the king saw Bob, he was very angry and cursed Bob in front of everyone. Bob was trembling while he was staring at the king. While Grey is observing, he doesn't know what was going on and the only thing they sense is that there might be trouble. 
The pastor asked for some favor for Shelley to look for Gray as he have something urgent matter to discuss. Urgent matter? Is it about being the spokesperson of the king? Shelley stated which made the pastor not utter anything. I don't know where you're getting your confidence from, but what makes you think you can persuade Gray to do it? Shelley added. Shelley saw Gray when war erupted. She knows that when Gray fought the battle, he was in no way related to the Holy Order. According to the pastor that everything they do is all in the name of the Holy Spirit. Shelley chuckled and asked the pastor if they already saw the Holy Spirit because Gray has. After hearing it, the pastor can't express and he remains silent. Going back to Bob, he apologizes to the king and reasons that he is the only one available in the stable. Gray notices that Bob is shivering so he concludes that Bob feels cold. He offers his cape and wrapped it around Bob's body. The king shouted and stopped Gray from being kind to Bob but Gray doesn't know what the king's intention was. From above, Angel Catherine and Demon Viviana are watching them. Catherine doesn't have any idea about Bob's identity and Vivian told her that Bob is the previous king's twelfth son, Benedict's little brother. He is the only survivor from the last fight for the crown. King Benedict doesn't want to recognize Bob as his brother and he only saw Bob as his worker. Look at him, he needs help, Gray stated. But Angel Catherine ordered him to leave the place and not investigate any further because it was a trap set by the demons. Gray insisted that he needs to help Bob but Angel Catherine warned him once again. Gray followed Angel Catherine and was about to leave but he heard the king ordering his troops to murder Bob. He also heard how Bob apologized to his brother King Benedict. Gray has his own conviction. He goes back to Bob which made Angel Catherine shocked and stop him. According to Shelley, once Gray will make a decision, no one can make him turn back, not even the Holy Spirit. Gray saw the troops carrying Bob and he ordered them to release the innocent child. Gray knew what they were planning to do but he still asked the king what they are doing. The king lied saying that they only have fun with Bob. But the boy doesn't look like he wants to play with you, Gray stated and asked the majesty if Bob do something wrong to him. The king cannot utter anything and Gray told him that he heard his plan of taking away the child's life. He shouted and ordered the troops once again to put down Bob. He calms down Bob and assured him that no one can hurt him as long as Gray is with him. Since the king can't stand Bob, Gray told him that he is a professional in raising kids so he's willing to make Bob his squire. After hearing it, the king objected and tell the truth that Bob is his brother. Instead of being surprised, Gray said that brothers should help each other and he has never seen an older brother humiliating his younger brother. He questioned the king if Bob is really his brother but the king was annoyed and said to Gray that he was being sarcastic. Looking at your fierce look, and the fact that you wanted to put him to death, you are definitely not brothers. Gray stated, they were about to leave while carrying Bob but King Benedict stopped him. At this time, Gray teased the king that he wanted to take away Bob's life earlier. And then now, he's claiming that they are brothers. He continued speaking facts to the king until the king was mad and shouted about what he really wanted. The cat stopped Gray from uttering words but he's really inexplicable. If you have no other comments, I'll be taking the child. Gray stated. The king blamed the church for Gray's actions and he concluded that the church wanted to support his brother Bob to create a puppet regime. He immediately ordered his people to gather all of his troops in the Lion Capital as soon as possible. Angel Catherine told Gray that he will be in trouble because of helping Bob but Gray doesn't care since all he saw is a king trying to murder an innocent child and as a knight of justice. He won't allow this thing to happen in front of him. Demon Vivian is cheering Gray so Catherine rubbed her face and ordered him to shut up and leave. She continued educating Gray. According to her, human society, especially the nobility and the royal society are complicated. Bob is the king's younger brother, which means he also has a right to inherit the throne. Thus, in addition to being the current king, Bob is also qualified to be the king of this country. Gray is now a paladin of the Holy See, and he represents the position of the Holy See. If Gray helps the child, it seems to the king that the Holy See wants to help this child to take his throne and that's why he wants to make Bob disappear immediately. From the moment Gray helped this innocent child, he was caught in an elaborate trap designed by the demons. They took advantage of Gray's integrity and goodness. The king feels that Bob threatens his throne and he will assassinate this little kid because it is a protection of his kingship. And the worst thing is, for thousands of years, human kings have guarded their kingship in his way. After knowing it, Gray can't accept the fact as for him it is reasonable. According to Catherine, the world has never been a reasonable place. King Benedict isn't murdering his brother for the first time. Not just brothers, he has even executed everyone who had the right to inherit the throne. Bob is only eight years old and is the only survivor. How can a papacy stand with such a butcher, Gray said. Catherine told him that the king brings stability to this country. After he succeeded to the throne, he reduced taxes and administered benevolence. Many people who could not afford to eat were thus fed. Many people who could not survive the winter lived on. Gray's efforts to save this boy today are bound to cause suspicion on the part of the king. If he is a sullen man, he may send troops directly against the church. Once the king's force and the divine powers confront each other, it will set off a great disaster in this country.
When that happens, many people who ought to live will die. Such a catastrophe can be avoided by returning Bob to the king. Angel Catherine knows that Bob is not at fault and his soul survives. She promised Grey that after Bob's death, she would extradite Bob's soul to the kingdom of heaven. Grey asked Catherine what heaven looks like. Catherine answered that it's a warm place full of happiness, joy, and without sorrow. Grey asked if there was snow in heaven, and Angel Catherine said nothing. He asked again if there was delicious food in heaven like what Shelley recommend but Catherine said no. And lastly, he asked if there's a flower, nice clothes, cats, and nightly novels and this time Catherine cannot answer. Does it mean, the kingdom of heaven is the same as the underground where I was born? Right. Grey stated, Bob is as young as Grey and Grey feels pity for him because he knew that Bob hasn't seen a lot of good things on earth just like him and he doesn't want to see Bob die like an animal. For Grey, it's not Bob who starts the disaster, it's his suspicious and crazy brother King Benedict. He has one way to resolve the current conflict. He invited Catherine to go to the Holy Spirit. On the other side, the Lion's Capital Army Camp is preparing for a battle. Other troops are hesitant because they are afraid that they will fight against the paladin but the king was very determined to execute everyone who wants to take his throne, even if it's the Holy Spirit. At the church, Angel Catherine and Grey start praying to the Holy One. Angel Catherine is asking for forgiveness for her incompetence and Grey is sincerely praying and asking for forgiveness for his recklessness in saving a child. This is a sinister trap that the demon has devised using the power of humans. If the angels will interfere in the internal affair of human politics, those who are in the power of earth will think that the Holy Synod is always aiming against the power they hold. This will deal a heavy blow to the church's efforts of 10,000 years on earth. The child is sinless and Grey made a vow to protect the weak without violating the law of God. Maybe some people treated vows as child's play, but Grey certainly doesn't do that because, for him, a knight's vow must be fulfilled. Once war will break out, the Lick Knight most likely reveals his identity. He is a righteous knight and he does not deserve such an end. With the demon pulling the strings, everything will move in an irreversible direction. Justice doesn't depend on the recipient. Whether he is big or small, even if it belongs to only one person, it is still justice. My lord, please command me, should I force stop the Lick Knight? Catherine whispered. My lord, I do not fear death since this is my origin. What I fear is the collapse of faith, so I will fight to the death to protect it. I know it cost a price to protect the faith, and if that price is me, I have no regrets, Grey declared. Bob is outside the church together with Vivian and Bob asks Vivian if the paladin really wanted to protect him. He was afraid for Grey because he knew his brother is so powerful. He has a large army under his command. Vivian shared that paladin Grey has fought against the 100,000 armies but Bob answered that it is with the help of the angel and he senses that angel Catherine doesn't want to save him. At the palace, the king ordered his troop to lock on Iron and the people who support Grey. All of them don't have any idea what was going on but Iron concludes that the knight might completely fall out with Grey. Shelley asked Iron where is Grey but the one who answered her is little Jimmy. Shelley was shocked after seeing these vampires still alive. Iron told her that Jimmy and Dora are atoning for their sins as adopted sons with the approval of the angels at Paladin Grey's side. Jimmy comes out of the window to see what's going on at the church. All of the king's troops are outside the church and preparing themselves to attack. While Grey and Angel Catherine are praying, the Holy Spirit calls their name and ordered them to raise their head. The Holy Spirit advised Angel Catherine to not try to stop Grey or she will only make Grey against them. Based on the rule of order, the church cannot support Grey's whims. But his faith is party radiant and the Holy Spirit cannot stop him from insisting on it. If you insist on saving the child, you will alone bear the consequences that will result from it. Perhaps, you will be exposed, spurned by all, and lose everything you possess now. The Holy Spirit said to Grey. The Holy Spirit ordered Angel Catherine to just observe and she's not allowed to help Grey. Even if Grey will succeed in this battle, the church will not be able to praise him but still Grey is very willing to sacrifice everything just to help the innocent child. The Holy Spirit has approved Grey's action but Angel Catherine can no longer provide him with help as what she did last time. It is all right Miss Angel, liches have their own ways, Grey answered. He will protect the child as much as he can while avoiding war. He cast soul fire to call a soul and Angel Catherine was shocked after seeing it. What the Holy Spirit wants to do but cannot do will be done by the paladin instead. The Lord is calling us in the north, to Lion's capital, charge. The Shadow Guard captain ordered. A showdown between the righteous knight and the good king has finally begun. The king is calling the paladin and threatens him to destroy the cathedral if he will not come out. The archbishop goes outside the church and asks the king what's going on. He doesn't have any idea why the church is surrounded by troops. Tell the paladin to hand over Bob and I'll spare your lives. The king stated. King Benedict blamed the church for Grey's actions and the archbishop asked for some time to investigate the situation but the king won't allow him. Instead, he ordered his troops to take the archbishop. He doesn't care if he will receive a punishment from the Holy Spirit. 
what he wants is the assurance of the throne. Suddenly, Jimmy with Tenidos came and saved the archbishop and the archbishop knew that Jimmy is the adopted son of the paladin as Grey said to the orphan children. Jimmy asked him what was going on but the archbishop was unsure and he only answered that Grey maybe took the little prince Ba. Jimmy also asked Vivian and Vivian answered that it was a conflict with the king. The king ordered his archers to shoot their arrows at the archbishop and Jimmy was alarmed and ready to use his power. But someone shouted stop and the arrows did not go throw them. Jimmy was curious about what magic it is. Suddenly, the paladin comes out. Your majesty, my guardian angel told me that you murder six of your brothers and now you want to execute the last one. She said you did it to secure the throne and to bring stability to this country. I accept this explanation and promise you that I will take Bob and not let him threaten your throne. In that case, will you spare your last brother? Gray said to the king but the king don't want any promise. The only thing he needed is Bob. Because of that, Gray concludes that there's no reason to talk about it since King Benedict doesn't want to agree with what he wants. He told Jimmy to protect Bob and the archbishop and also reminded him not to execute any humans. When he was about to go, someone called him. It's the possessed cat that wanted to be with Gray's battle with the king. I don't know if you're doing the right thing but this cat is always on your side. The cat stated, since Benedict refused to back down, Gray will have a judgment on him here. He will get back justice for the six brothers Benedict murdered and for Prince Bob that rightfully belonged to them. At this moment, the king is aware that the paladin doesn't have the will of the Holy Spirit, no power, and no guardian angel so he wondered how will Grey fight without the blessing of these deities. Because of that, he was confident to fight against the paladin. Grey doesn't care if he doesn't have the blessing of the Holy Spirit. What matters most to him is that the Holy Spirit has consented to this war. The Holy Spirit cannot interfere with his choice so he can fight fairly in front of the world for their different intentions. He started to attack the king without casting magic but the king dodged and the troops used their weapon to attack him. A knight isn't afraid in the face of a strong enemy but bold and faithful, not a disgrace to the Holy Spirit but loyal and upright, protects the weak rather than fearing death, never violates the law of God. He enveloped himself with the threefold defensive buff to count power and speed. He did not use powerful magic that could spear life. He only used defensive magic because he doesn't want to execute people. His attacks are fierce and none of the soldiers he dispersed are seriously injured. He attached debilitating magic to his weapon and those soldiers who were hit by this would lose their fighting ability for a short period but it would not be life-threatening. He is not aware that he can't win like this but he's just obsessed with it. The king ordered his troops to execute Grey using a crossbow and Grey flew away to the church sign. The area where Grey flew away is surrounded by the troops but the only thing they saw that still move is an injured cat. The possessed cat asked Grey if he was okay but Grey doesn't move. The cat started to cry while keeps waking him up but it seems like Grey doesn't hear him. His ribs are all shattered and his spine is broken. The soul fire belonging to the lick is withering away. If he hadn't expanded his magic power to cast debilitating magic, he would have been able to survive the strike. Angel Catherine was sad seeing Grey and she also blamed herself for just standing and watching Grey fights with several troops of the king. Hey, Grey wakes up. Don't scare me, okay. I'll never call you a fool again, say something. You're a paladin. There are only five of them in the whole world, get up. Don't you still have to do justice for the little prince? Didn't you say that liches don't often swear, but they certainly keep their oaths? You have to fulfill the oath of a knight, wake up Grey. The possessed cat said while crying. The underground is a place where there is neither sound nor light. A land only filled with heaps of the dead and amid fear and madness. There's a man who encountered a little lick. It doesn't matter why a man is here deep in the ground. What's important is the fact that he can't go back to the surface. While he was resting, he heard some noise behind him. It was the skeleton who keeps following him and since the skeleton will not stop chasing him, he decided to dress up the skeleton and he was happy because the skeleton looks like a human with the cloth. The skeleton keeps on pulling the clothes and the man realized that it's better if this skeleton can learn how to move like a human being so he decided to teach the skeleton how to be a living person. He gave a name to the skeleton. He called it Grey since he was not sure if it was alive or dead, and the name Grey means somewhere between black and white. That's how the man and the skeleton teamed up in the depths of the underground, a journey without an end. The skeleton liked to listen to the things it doesn't know. He gives knowledge to Grey about the sky and the sun. Through man's words, the lick formed a prototype of the human world in his mind. Until one day, the man feels weak and believes that he can't keep going with Grey. He's been wandering for too long for a logic that he should have stopped trying a long ago. While they are lying down, the man feels the same way as he used to lie on the ground with his sister and count the stars in the sky. He shared to Grey about his story with his sister. They are both an orphan and they were dependent on each other. One day, a nobleman took a fancy to his sister's beauty so the nobleman took his sister by force. He was afraid of angering the nobleman so he did not dare to resist and he could only console himself by thinking that his sister can eat every day with the nobleman. Unbeknownst to him, his sister who was unbearably humiliated leaped from the castle. 
He lost his senses and tried to execute the nobleman to avenge his sister's death but he was knocked down by the guards before he could even touch the nobleman's cause. He regretted it and thought, if only he hadn't let his sister go with the nobleman in the first place, but there are no ifs in this world. Little Grey, someday in the future, if there's something in particular you want to do and someone you must protect, even if your bones are broken, you must do it with all your might. Don't be like me. If you compromise once, you will regret it for the rest of your life. And even after years of death, your soul will be cursed with regret and will never rest in peace. The man advised Grey. At this point, Grey remembered each word. If you compromise once, you will regret it for the rest of your life. Even with your bones are broken, you must do it with all your might. Never make yourself regret it. There's a light emerging and everyone was shocked after seeing it. The troops, Angel Catherine, the demons, Demon Vivian and Bob, and the Paws Cat. Outside the mansion, Dora is checking how many troops that are guarding them and she reported it to Iron. Iron asked her if she can handle the troops and Dora said that she's not allowed to harm any humans due to her oath with the paladin but what she can do is put the guards all to sleep for a while. She immediately followed Iron's order and used her sleep flux magic on all the troops. After that, they escape right away. Iron was thinking that Grey might not get the support of the angels in his actions because Iron can't see any holy light lit up in the sky. She has a strong premonition that they must get to Grey as soon as possible. Shelley believes that they need backup in advance so she borrows Robert and she'll think of a way to get a route out of the Lion Capital. Iron is hesitant but Shelley told her not to underestimate the connection of the Gregory family. They go to the underground paradise, a black market. Shelley told Robert to wear a mask because there are people who operate here that is not allowed to see the light of day. There are many ways to leave the Lion Capital, as long as one is willing to pay money. Shelley called a man and offered a huge amount. It was Paz, the leader of the Red Scorpion and the one who defeated the giant army of Count Caspar. Going back to Grey, he is now aware that his ribs are shattered but that is not a major issue for him. His main problem is his broken spine and since he wanted to join it together, he decided to cover every bone in his body with soul fire. He doesn't want to let himself feel regretful. Even if he feels the pain, he doesn't care because, for him, a knight's pain is a strength and hardship is a trial. Oh holy light, please wash my soul. Grey prayed. Iron is on her way to the church and her army informed her that the king has a lot of guards. He was worried about Iron because Iron carrying not only herself but the whole duchy of Betcher. Iron doesn't care because Grey is her paladin and if her paladin will die at the hands of the king, it's much more dangerous for the duchy of Betcher. The existence of the paladin is directly related to the survival of the kingdom of Betcher so they must save Grey in whatever it takes. When they are near the cathedral, they saw the holy light emerge from the sky. A soul fire of a lick is blue but there was a golden flame covering Grey's body. Grey was on fire and the cat hysterically asked for help to put out the fire but Grey hold him and the cat's wounds started to heal. The king's troops were shocked after seeing the golden holy fire and if it continues, the morale of the army will be swayed. At this point, King Benedict still ordered his army to attack Grey but Grey hold his sword and started to move while saying all injustice will be judged. There shall not be a hint of gloom in every corner where the holy light shines. Benedict, I will judge you here. The troops started to rattle upon seeing Grey holding the sword and they knew that they will be burned to ashes by the holy fire. King Benedict was very mad and he doesn't care if Grey was still blessed by the Holy Spirit. I will also execute the Holy Spirit here today. The king declared while attacking Grey using his bow but there is another arrow coming from behind. The Knights of the Silver Moon are coming and their goal is to rescue their head and not take any human lives. King Benedict wondered where this cavalry coming from and he concluded that Grey is hiding an army in the Lion Capital. It's the first time in tens of thousands of years that something like this had happened. The speed of faith has germinated in the heart of sincerity and the transformation is taking place in the Lick Knight. In such a period of tranquility, a new saint will be born. Grey at this point has long since lost consciousness. Iron ordered her people to gather all the wounded and she will take responsibility for those injured humans. Shadow One introduced himself to Iron and Iron thought that these knights were those kids. Shadow stated that they voluntarily joined the Order of the Silver Moon after defecting from the King's army. She's not aware that the person inside this armor is the one who imitates Grey and stabs her on the river. At this time, the current condition of Grey is a bit strange but the angels are helping Grey to heal. His body is transforming into a saint but the problem is the sacred fire. And the body of the undead are repelling each other. His body is repeating the process of destruction and regeneration. Vivian suddenly came and she knew a way that can heal Grey, through succubus, merging the sacred fire and the undead body as soon as possible. Angel Catherine grabs Vivian to help Grey to heal. The precise manipulation of the magical power is indeed the forte of the succubus. Vivian started to cast her magic. The place where light and darkness meet is going to give birth to a new life. At the temporary garrison of the Duchy of Betcher's ambassadorial corps, 
Gregory is looking for Shelley but what he saw is Iron together with Bob and he was shocked after realizing that the rumor about Grey is true. Gregory was mad at Grey's actions because he knew that Benedict is a king recognized by the Holy Synod and the worst that could happen according to him was that Grey could be condemned as a heretic by the Holy Synod and the whole world will denounce him. After hearing it, Bob apologized to them and he was blaming himself. Irene tapped his head and told him that it was not his fault because he is only an innocent kid. Iron blamed herself for being a girl. If she had been a boy, she would have not given the king a chance to take the family's honor. For her, if she hadn't fought for the family's honor, so many people wouldn't have died because of it. The paladin choose you, not your brother. Hold up your chest and prove to everyone. You are not at fault and you are entitled to live with honor. Iron stated. What happened to the cathedral spread everywhere even at the privy council but the pope ordered his people to do nothing unless he can get an answer from the Holy Spirit. The news also spread to the kingdom of Alan which was a perennial enemy of the kingdom of Isaac. They know what the knights of the paladin did after entering the lion capital. They rescue the wounded soldiers and there was not a single dead person. They reorganized the lion capital without causing a riot. They also arrested scoundrels fishing in the troubled waters and sent them to prison. These knights doesn't accept monetary bribes did not accept the temptation of beauty and did not even accept water and food from the residents. They were like the reincarnation of the god of justice, dispelling all evils and injustice. Because of this, Paladin Grey has gained a high reputation in Lion Capital. Some of the inhabitants of the city are even willing to abandon their traditions and worship him as the new king. At this time, if the kingdom of Alan will rashly send troops to Isaac's kingdom, they might encounter unimaginable obstacles. The ruler of Alan's kingdom King Barneth III received a letter from King Benedict. Duke Fernandez, and Duke Tangier beside the Holy Synod. They want to join forces with King Barneth to expel the paladin. The reward he will get is half of the Kingdom of Isaac. This is once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them. The Lion King's capital is an isolated city. In fact, everyone is ready to make a move, and the Holy Synod has outright disassociated from it. They even guaranteed that the paladin would not receive assistance from the Holy Spirit. After three days, Paladin Grey has awakened and Iron immediately goes to see him. Grey's original armor was completely damaged so Iron temporarily replaced its spare parts. They both already know that the Kingdom of Alan, King Benedict, Duke Fernandez, and Duke Tangier have formed a coalition and completely blocked the Lion Capital. The worst part is that the Holy Synod has completely abandoned Grey and not branding Grey as a heretic is their last act of mercy. According to Iron, during the three days that Grey has been in a coma, many people came to her to discuss what should be done to Grey. Some say that Grey is an extremely tactful person. His existence is full of secrets and no one knows his true identity. Some say that Grey started the rebellion under the guise of saving Prince Bob and they conclude that Grey planned in advance because of his knights that appeared during the war with the king and now. They think that Grey is trying to take over the throne of the kingdom of Isaac from the beginning. Everyone told Iron that Grey is a scheming burglar and these people want Iron to draw a line in the sand with Grey. Even the Holy Synod sent a letter to her urging her to send Grey to the Court of International Arbitration. What she wants now is to hear Grey's side story. Tell me why at this most critical point in time, you choose to swing your sword at King Benedict. Iron asked. Grey stated that he did it because the king tried to murder an innocent kid in front of him. He knows that the royal family has something to say about defending the right of kings but Bob obviously can't actively threaten the king's right to the throne. I know I may be a bit naive in my opinion, but I don't think I've done wrong. Grey stated. He also agrees with what Iron said that he has a lot of secrets that he can't confess for the time being but he doesn't intend to keep them to himself but he just needs an opportunity. Suddenly, Iron laughed and Grey wondered why. You reacted honestly more than I thought Grey, Iron stated. The truth is that, after the incident, everyone advised Iron to disown Grey and retreat to the White City but she chose to stay. Grey asked what's the reason and Iron answered, because I like you. After hearing it, Grey was surprised and feels thrilled because he can't believe what he heard. Grey answered Iron that he also has a fondness for her. According to Iron, what they mean by fondness is not the same but it doesn't matter to her. Iron reminds herself as a child if he will look to Grey. When she was little, she always thought she could change this wicked world. She wanted to be the best lord in the world and wanted to abolish slavery, make the best environment for all children to grow up in, to provide all the people a peaceful life. But when she grew up, when she finally became the Duchess of Thatcher, all she did every day was to approve work reports from all over the region, wearing a mask of power in the aristocratic society of the world. She was so busy, day and night that she even forgot to look back at all the things she wanted to change. In the end, she learned to compromise. By sacrificing a small number of people, more people can be made happy. By pretending she didn't see it she could exchange it for a peaceful life for more people. She always feel that she had unknowingly become the kind of person she hates the most. And now, she was glad that she didn't give up on Grey until the end. For her, Grey is like a kid. 
This world is only right or wrong, without any complex interests and entanglements. He doesn't like a child as long as he thinks it's the right thing to do, even if it means death. The bottom line is, Iron thinks that Grey can really seems to have the power to turn over the chessboard and rewrite the rules. She was thinking that Grey can create that kind of world where children are fed, the elderly are cared for and there is no evil. After hearing it, Grey was embarrassed by Lady Iron's compliments. Suddenly, Iron kneeled in front of Grey and kissed his hand while saying that she wants to see a world like what she was dreaming. Even if it's just a dream, an ethereal dream. Even if she and Grey can't reach the world in their lifetime. But for the sake of that fantasy, no matter what Grey is hiding, no matter what Grey will be facing, even if he wants to save Prince Bob or change the rules, he can always do it. Even though the world is against them, she promised Grey that she will always be by his side. My lady, your knight will turn your vision into reality. Even if it's just a dream, even if it's a fantasy, even if I have to spend my whole life, I will definitely make it a reality. Grey proclaimed, while they are at the tower, they are not aware that Shelley is hiding while listening to them. Before they will focus on fulfilling Iron's dream, they need to focus first on their task at hand. Since Grey is in coma for three days, and although the Silver Moon Knights are trying to maintain order, the Lion Capital is still in a state of unrest and many people wanted to see Grey. Grey was curious about who they are but Iron did not tell him for now. Instead, she told Grey to do some mental preparation. After a while, Grey has a hard time preparing mentally because he's thinking of who will be the one who wants to meet him. While he was walking, he meets Shelly holding a flower bouquet and he immediately greeted Shelly in an energetic tone. Grey is a little bit distressed because of thinking about who will he meet and Shelly noticed it. She suddenly gives the bouquet to Grey and advises him to give it to Iron and propose marriage. Grey was shocked and because of his reaction, Shelly told him to act like a man but up until now, Grey doesn't know what a man is. Afterward, Grey goes to Iron's room and asked her to be with Grey forever. This is what Shelly told Grey to say. Iron was puzzled and she knew that Shelly is at the back of Grey. Shelly didn't expect Iron's reaction because she thought that Iron will be thrilled with Grey's proposal. Iron concludes that Shelly overheard their conversation with Grey on the terrace and Shelly lied that she was just passing by. Iron told her not to be nervous since it was not a big deal for her. Not a big deal. But you love this guy, don't you? Shelly said. Shelly sensed that Grey didn't understand Iron's feeling for him but Iron doesn't care. Shelly wondered why Iron is very calm. Iron ordered Grey to leave the room as she will need to talk to Shelly alone. Three years ago, Shelly is trying to learn how to ride a horse. She was very happy but she was scolded by her father. Her grandfather Gregory is always by her side and Shelly's father is blaming Gregory for spoiling her to the point that for them she doesn't know how to behave. She's a count's daughter who can't ride a horse, only a carriage. This was a social truism that Shelly learned when she was 13 years old. She was forced to wear an elegant dress to attend a ball but for her, her life became boring. Speaking of which, it's the same with Eliza. She is also becoming more and more boring. When she was outside the palace, she heard someone who was memorizing a map. Because of the hair color, she concluded that it was from the Betcher family and she thought that it was a boy. She go near to Iron and Iron knew her from the start. Iron is always sneaking out when she was a kid and Horace is the one who always accompanies her. From the moment that Horace called her a lady, Shelley realized that the person in front of her is a girl. She was curious why Iron is holding paperwork and there was a sword hanging on her waist. Because of curiosity, Shelley asked her grandpa Gregory if there was a young master in the Duke of Betcher family and Gregory answered that there is one young lady master. Shelley is observing Iron after that night and she was amazed by how powerful Iron is. She feels envy because if it was her, she will be scolded by her father for being shameless. Gregory told her that she don't need to be envious because they are not the same. According to Gregory, Lady Iron is the only daughter of the Duke and she will inherit the dukedom in the future so she must know everything. It is usually not possible for a woman to be a dukedom but the Betcher family is special. Shelly hates balls and noisy places, and she hates being a decorative item. She hates the chains that bind her, and he fantasized that one day, she'll be free of her chains. That is how he imagined herself to be. But then, when Iron invited them to a ball and saw Iron holding a man in armor, she thought that Iron will be getting married and have 30 kids. She always told herself that Iron can't stand up to the king. She knew that her thought is a bit vile, but she wants to see Iron fail. As long as Iron will fail, it will prove that they are the same as Shelly. Nothing but a birdcage and a chain. She doesn't have the ideal of helping the world. She only wants to ride a horse and sing songs with the people she likes or the people who like her. She wants to travel freely without stopping for long in one place. Just thinking about the idea of carrying the fate of the entire duchy on her back is too heavy for her. If it were Shelly in Iron's place, she would have immediately chosen to give up. However, the time Grey fights against the king, she saw a miracle happen. For Shelly, Iron has found her hero, a man whom she trusts, whose heart is in the right place and on whom she relies, a hero who belongs only to her. Shelly tries to get close to them, 
but she believes that it's a world she couldn't venture into. When the time that she knew Gregory will go to the Lion Capital, she asks Gregory if she can come but Gregory doesn't allow her because Shelley's parents are afraid that she will be in a conflict again. On that day, Gregory also informed her that her parents have found a husband for her and they asked Gregory to send back Shelley as soon as possible but since Gregory feels pity for her, he allows Shelley to come with him to the Lion Capital and consider it as her last trip before getting married. Everyone has a different path. Some people have their paths forcibly mapped out from birth. Some people are born differently and have more options to pick a path. Those who are free to choose what they want to do can choose freely who they love. Shelley asked Iron why she wants to give up. Shelley said that Iron is expressing her intentions but she's actually giving up at this point. Iron asked Shelley if they are a good match with Grey and Shelley told her that their mutual understanding has long exceeded that of an ordinary lord and subject. But, he provoked the Holy Synod, Iron stated, if things were only like a battle of the White City. If it was only against the combined forces of the Kingdom of Allen, King Benedict, Duke Fernandez, and Duke Tangier, she's confident that she would have stood shoulder to shoulder with Grey. But he provoked the Holy See. With the call of the Papacy, all the countries of the whole continent will be his enemies. Just because of Iron's feelings, the million of the commoners of the Duchy of Betcher will become enemies of the world. She can be Grey's backer but she can't accompany him. I am the Grand Duchess of Betcher and I am responsible for those millions of human lives. Iron stated. She told Shelley that she was not free from what Shelley thought. Shelley feels sad because they have the same feelings as Iron. It's just like a caged bird in chains. At the church, Gray feels uneasy and he's nervous of who is the one who would like to see him. Vivian reminded him that they are not a friendly person and according to Catherine. It's some follow-up questions that he needs to deal with after he chooses to draw his sword for the young prince. Vivian and Catherine are throwing words at each other until they ended to argue but Gray was happy that after he wakes up from a coma, the relationship between these two has become much better than before. The cat object and asked Gray how he can call it a good relationship. After a while, the guest of Gray has arrived and he can't wait any longer to meet them. It was the residents of the Lion Capital, it's not just one but a hundred of them. They are complaining and asking for help from Gray because after the conflict between Gray and King Benedict, the king joined the other two dukes to blockade the Lion's Capital. Now, the people inside can't get in and the people outside can't get out. In other words, the food in the city has become a huge problem, although their Chamber of Commerce has some food stored as national stock, and they have tried to sell it to the common people at a fair price, nearly a hundred of thousand people in the city can't sustain this problem for too long. If the Allied forces keep encircling the city, the consequences will be unthinkable. King Benedict had originally set up many relief centers in the city. After he left, their relief centers lost their maintenance and they have no right to open the treasury. There are already many refugees who have not been able to survive the winter and have accepted the extradition of the Holy Spirit in advance. In addition, the Knights of the Silver Moon have been patrolling the streets day and night. And although it was effective in maintaining order, it has also increased the people's anxiety and fear. Because of this problem they face, they are asking the Paladin for some help for them to survive. There are too many people were injured in the last conflict, and those who had their arms cut off were only a small number. The bones and internal organs of more than a dozen people were badly injured because of the rushing and trampling of horses. There are simply not enough doctors and medicines, and there are many soldiers whose injuries have already begun to deteriorate. If left unchecked, the condition of the wounded soldiers will continue to deteriorate and may cause a plague in the Lion Capital. Gray talked to hundreds of people one by one and he heard different complaints and some blaming him for what just happened. I will solve your problem one by one, Gray promised them. After a while, the complaints were finally over and Gray wondered why there are many strange problems coming after he just saves the little prince who shouldn't have died. Angel Catherine explained that human society is like a complex magic array. Gray's expulsion of King was equivalent to erasing the most critical words in the magic array. Thus, naturally, the whole magic array stopped functioning properly. Gray is very determined to solve the problem and he will never run away. At this point, since there are many problems to be solved, Gray is motivated to use 10 bolts of energy. When the night comes, a Duke Fernandez camp which is 50 kilometers away, troops are chattering outside their tents, but suddenly they heard a horse's hooves. All sins will be settled, all souls will be sublimated, the sun will shine in every corner, and there will be no room for a single shadow. They were shocked upon seeing the night of the silver moon coming to them. The Knight of the Silver Moon is attacking and they set fire to the ration tents and they are charging too fast. Duke Fernandez's troops fall apart and they report it to Duke Fernandez. He was mad after hearing it because two hours ago, they received a secret message from the Lion Capital saying everything is fine. He immediately ordered his army to surround the Silver Moon Knights and attack them using crossbows. Upon seeing it, 
The strategic objective of Grey has been achieved so he ordered his knights to retreat. Fernandez's troops thought that they are afraid and Duke Fernandez ordered his people not to chase the Silver Moon Knights. They put out the fire and only ordinary tents were burned. Duke Fernandez planned to write a message to Benedict to inform him that Paladin has awakened but suddenly. The troop reported that the camp to the southwest has been attacked by the Silver Moon Knights and the tents had been burned. Fernandez was shocked because they thought that the Silver Moon Knights already retreat. They didn't know that they just circled around and continued to harass his troops. The Silver Moon Knights are going towards the southeast and also towards the northwest. They are running around. They looted Fernandez's provision and they burned everything they couldn't get away. And they can't stop the Silver Moon Knights because they are all fast. They chased all night to Duke Fernandez's camp until nothing was left. Shadow was happy about what they experienced because they don't feel tired even when they are marching at night. They feel better now than before when they are still humans. Gray ordered his knights to keep charging to destroy the enemy's encirclement in the shortest possible time. This is the first problem that they need to solve. Angel Catherine and Vivian are watching them from above and Vivian is shivering because she remembered an unpleasant memory. She saw a demon in a lick fight when she was a kid and that scene can only be described as despair. Lick is the most bizarre species the world has ever produced. They are born out of death and have a nearly infinite lifespan, but they have no clear desire and they spend their days like salted fish. But if someone gives them purpose, they go crazy with joy that they finally have something to do. They don't need food, they don't need rest. The legions of undead they summon are one of the least magic-draining spells. They have no need for morale, no fear of death, no fear of pain, and superb discipline. The scariest thing is that these guys can never sleep until they reach their goal. Therefore, a famous proverb was born in the demon world. Grey is coming to King Benedict. It is better to mess with ten angels of the same rank than to mess with one lick of the same rank. Early morning, Robert reported to Iron that Grey was roaming out last night. Iron immediately dresses up and goes back to Robert. Robert said to Iron that Grey have made a detour and beaten up all the troops that surrounded the lion capital. And the armies that were beaten up by Grey didn't suffer any major casualties but Grey took back all their rations and told Robert to find a way to distribute it to the inhabitants of the lion capital. Grey burned down all the army camps. Halfway through, King Benedict tried to attack the Lion Capital while Grey was attacking Duke Fernandez but they were intercepted by the Silver Moon Knights who were on their way back. And now, they've been routed to Habsburg east of the Lion Capital for repairs. The two vampires return to the Lion Capital to deliver the provisions. Jimmy is very exhausted from following a lick and Dora reminded him to keep going because he's the light of hope for the blood vampire. I don't want to be the light anymore. Jimmy stated, the Knights of the Silver Moon distributed the goods to the people and as expected, they were all happy that Grey heard their complaints. The Paladin's overnight raid on Benedict's allied forces was a great success, and the capital's blockade will be removed. There are a lot of special announcements about the Paladin. He secured a large amount of food for the people in the south of the city. He has set up a consultation room in the east of the city. There are people who doubted him but they don't have a choice because they need assistance to survive. Iron with little Jimmy is observing from above. The troops can't fight the Silver Moon Knights and Iron wondered why these armies are not shooting arrows. Jimmy informed her that they already run out of arrows. Not only arrows, except for the ones they were wearing and holding, they have nothing left. Iron was puzzled and suddenly asked Jimmy why he have no problem standing with the sun in the middle of the day. My father ordered me to keep you safe, Jimmy answered. Iron noticed that Jimmy constantly followed Grey all the time goofing around so she told Jimmy that she will talk to Grey about letting him go out in the daytime because even though Jimmy is a vampire he was still just a child after all. Jimmy was thrilled upon realizing that Iron is actually a good person. Jimmy informed Iron that his armor was also enchanted by the guardian angel and as long as he wear the armor, the sun won't be a threat to him. After hearing it, Iron realized something. As long as you put on the armor, no one will be able to find out your true identity. Little Jimmy, let me ask you one last question. Gray probably is not a human just like you, right? Iron stated. Jimmy can't answer her and lies that he did not hear anything so Iron repeats her question. Jimmy laughed and said that Gray is a paladin so there's no way that he's not a human at all. Iron noticed that Jimmy's eyes are dodging violently and it feels like a deja vu. She remembered what Gray said on the terrace and she started to overthink where is her night really coming from. At Duke Fernandez's camp, the soldiers started to feel weak and they have been sleepless and waterless for nearly 30 hours. Fernandez received news that the Kingdom of Allen has fought its way back. King Benedict has retreated to the eastern town, and Tangier's side has surrendered outright. He's very mad at Grey and because of this feeling, Duke Fernandez has had a stroke. It's been 36 hours after Paladin Grey went to war with the coalition forces of Benedict came, the final turn of the tide. Duke Fernandez's army surrendered to the Knights of the Silver Moon and promised not to participate in the war anymore. 
Thus, the last person still holding on to this fiasco is the king, or rather, the former King Benedict II. King Benedict was in the castle that was originally designed to hold only a thousand soldiers. At this moment, there are ten thousand men inside, and they don't even have any provisions. Without the Silver Moon Knight's help, in less than three days, they will crumble and if they will keep delaying until these people give up, many people will die. Grey can't watch those soldiers die in vain because of Benedict's sins. At the Privy Council, they received an urgent letter from the King of Allen. King Barneth III of Allen Kingdom is very angry and has asked them to explain everything that happened in the Lion Capital the past few days. Until the Pope will get an answer, Barneth will block all religious activities of the Holy See in the Kingdom of Allen. They started to feel strange after they discovered that the cavalry under the command of Paladin Grey do not know fatigue, do not need to eat, do not even need to drink water. They aren't even injured after being slashed by the sword. And because of it, the Pope concludes that Grey made a deal with the demon. They never thought that Grey would be strong enough to fight against a king of a nation without the blessing of the Holy Spirit and they don't understand what is the origin of his power. The Pope ordered his people to send Pastor Dean to contact the paladin so they can get more information about Grey. The Pope will promote Anthony III to the rank of Cardinal and after that, he will promote Pastor Dean as the new Archbishop of the Kingdom of Isaac. Since they don't know the source of Paladin Grey's power, the Pope asks Archbishop Andrew to visit Grey and investigate this time. After the day that Shelley and Iron talked, Shelly slept for the whole day and when she get tea, Grey suddenly appeared and Shelly screamed and threw the tea unintentionally at Grey. Shelly heard that Grey and his knights fight against the king but according to Grey, he failed. He informed Shelly that the king is hiding in a small castle called Habsburg. He tried to take the castle but he failed because he didn't want to cause any more casualties. After all, the purpose of this war is not to execute people but to only judge King Benedict for his crimes. At this time, Grey thought since he was targeting only his majesty, Benedict, he could convince those soldiers who followed him to turn to the Divine Embrace. Something similar had already happened during the Battle of the White City, so he wanted to try it this time too. And as a paladin, he had to learn to preach too. Grey recited the Bible verse outside the castle, and they fired crossbows at him. He already asked thoughts to Angel Catherine, Vivian, the possessed cat, and Lady Iron, but all of their suggestion was rejected by Grey for some reason, and this is why he's here with Shelley in the middle of the night. Shelley understands the general situation. According to her, since Grey just said that he tried to attack the city but he failed, the reason was that he didn't want to cause casualties. It wasn't that he couldn't attack the city. If Grey wants to attack it, he can easily take it. But if there will be mass casualties, he thinks that it will be no different from the king. Shelley concludes that Grey doesn't want to bear the guilt of murdering people when he started a war. Sir Knight, I think your idea is fine, but it's just missing some crucial steps, Shelley stated. As Shelley advises, Grey goes to the sermon the next day. The army was annoyed that he came back and they believed the Grey will preach again. Grey got a holy book in his arms and the army wondered why he doesn't just attack the city. Grey doubts Shelley's method but if it's possible, the only time he doesn't really want to do it is during the sermon. He feels like he was forcing people to accept his faith. Grey started to preach and as expected, the army of King Benedict was annoyed and they prepare the crossbow and shoot arrows at Grey. But suddenly, there was a strong lighting and they wondered what is happening. Last night, Shelley told Grey to preach as usual and if the army will not listen, then he should find a way to keep them quiet. She also added that the bigger the scene, the better. It should not hurt them but it has to make them feel absolutely unable to resist. Students, there are rules in class. If you mess up during class time, you'll be punished. Don't try to hide. I know where each one of you is. You can't hide, Grey stated. On the sixth day of the Siege of Habsburg, the armies are gloomy and still annoyed with Grey. To this day, Grey still preaches outside the castle. These thunderballs are always above them. Anyone who talks nonsense during his sermon will be struck by lightning. They stayed in a castle for too long without any food for days or even water. Gray is done with his preaching and he will have a quiz for the armies. If they can answer the question, they can get a price, whether it's bread, wine, or broth. Anyone who can answer his questions correctly can choose what they want. Armies are puzzled and Gray started to ask them. On his first question, one army raised his hand, but before he answered, he asked first to Grey if he can really give food to the armies who can give the right answer. Of course, a paladin always does what he says, Grey replied. The man answered correctly so Grey give him food and they now believe that Grey is telling the truth. They never thought that the lighting ball could deliver the food to them and they now conclude that it's a miracle. Because of their hunger, every one of them wanted to answer Grey's questions. Grey was amazed that Shelley's advice worked and the armies now finally believed in what he said. He was thrilled to see these armies start to trust him. According to Shelley, to get people to listen to him is to give them absolute fear so they can't have a single thought of resistance. In absolute fear, their thinking will slowly become dull. 
They will think that they have suffered all the pain because their life is already in Gray's hands. Gray should grant them something more terrible than death. According to Shelley, it will directly break their psychological defenses. When the psychological defenses are almost broken, Gray should give them some benefits. In that state, they will think that even Gray can clearly execute them at any time. He chose to be nice and save them. Shelley said that if Gray will do it, these armies will completely forget who trapped them and who made them suffer the fear. They will only remember who gave them the benefit of the doubt. In the end, there is only gratitude left in their hearts. This approach is a bit despicable and if Shelley will tell Gray the cause and effect, he might not do it. What is important for Shelley is that she solved the problem that Gray asked for. On the fifteenth day of the Siege of Habsburg, the nominal king of the Kingdom of Isaac, Benedict, mysteriously disappeared. On the same day, the soldiers trapped in the fort announced their surrender. With ten thousand surrendered soldiers, the paladin returned to the lion capital amidst flowers and applause. The spring season has not yet begun. The flower petals that were flying in the sky were collected by the residents of the lion capital who went to the deep mountains on their own initiative. At the beginning of the arrival of the Silver Moon Knights, the inhabitants of the lion capital were actually very scared. When the paladin's knights arrived, they drove the rulers away who had been nice to the people and then went from house to house to arrest people in the name of maintaining the law and order. The lion capital was in a state of unrest because of the arrival of the Silver Moon Knights. But slowly, it became clear that this order of knights following the paladin was really different. When they said they would distribute food, they made sure that the food really reached every house. When they said they'll solve a problem, they really helped all the people who came to them for help. In front of the paladin, all people are equal and respected, whether they are nobles of the palace or commoners. He never oppressed anyone with his status, so everyone dared to speak loudly with him. The 10,000 imperial troops who surrendered to the Silver Moon Knights were also properly settled. Everyone realized one thing, more or less, in their hearts, the triumph of the paladin meant that a new era was coming. A few days before the great victory of Habsburg, soldiers are attending Gray's preaching and they can freely eat what they want. King Benedict was disappointed that his people followed the rules of the paladin. For him, the battle is over and he accepts his defeat. He removes his cape and he released his people from their vows. He was planning to go personally and settle things with the paladin but suddenly, there was a black smoke going to Benedict and he suddenly disappeared and the armies wondered if it was the paladin's doing. Benedict can't breathe but there's someone told him not to panic. His name is Andrew, the Archbishop of the Privy Council. He told Benedict that the Holy Synod claimed that Gray did not receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Benedict told him that if Gray was not blessed by the Holy Spirit, how come his cavalry under him did not eat and drink? Andrew told Benedict that there was a possibility that they might not be a human. Benedict was puzzled after hearing it. Andrew wondered why would Gray desperately try to hide his face under his armor. He appeared to help Benedict to reveal the true face of the knight hidden under the holy light. On the other hand, since Gray's armor is too conspicuous and will be recognized easily, Shelley decided to change it. Gray wondered why he should not be recognized and Shelley told him that it's fun to see the world in a different light sometimes. Shelley extend her hand to invite Gray to go out and at this time, Gray did not realize what Shelley's invitation meant to him. Shelley leads the way and they go to different places where they can freely enjoy themselves. Gray then realized that the Lion Capital has a lot of things that White City doesn't have. Gray sensed something in Shelley that she was not to be excited compared to the last time that they have a date together. Shelley did not answer him. Instead, she asked Gray to accompany her to one last place that she wants to go. They go to a huge tree where they can overlook the whole city. Gray is still wondering what exactly Shelley wanted from him. Shelley informed him that she will be forcibly picked up and will be married back home. Gray was puzzled and tried to understand what marriage is until he comes to the conclusion that he needs to congratulate Shelley. The cat kicked him and educate him that it is not something to congratulate. Shelley was very sad and told him that she don't want to go back and attend the marriage that she doesn't want to. For her, the marriage contract is like a chain, binding her limbs, depriving her mind, imprisoning her soul, and making it impossible for her to ever get free. She asked for Gray's help this time. Is it to help you escape? Great. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty good at escaping. Gray suggested. Shelley can escape without Gray's help, but what she really wants from Gray is to marry her. Gray pulled his hand and he was shocked why Shelley chose him. For Shelley, there's no better choice than Gray. He is a paladin, single, has status and position, and the most important thing is that Gray doesn't interfere with what Shelley does. That is what she really wants in a man. A marriage contract refers to a contractual relationship between a man and a woman established on the basis of equal consent to live together for a long time. But Gray wondered if it's really possible for someone like him who doesn't even know if he's a man or a woman to make a marriage contract with someone else. Shelley didn't expect that Gray will be distressed to this extent so she concluded that Gray might have other sorts of references besides iron. 
I love Lady Iron, Grey said. Since Grey can't give an answer, she understands that Grey's love is a kind of good feeling based on admiration and respect. Do you want to know what difference about Iron loves you? Shelley stated and Grey believes that he has the right to know it. According to Shelley, it's dependence, it is adoration, and a strong possessiveness. Grey answered that he doesn't feel any possessiveness from Lady Iron. Iron's character is restrained enough, and most importantly, she has chosen to give up. That day on the terrace, she already sealed her love and left only the same degree of affection as Grey. After all, she is such a proud person. It seems she does not want to lower down herself because of affection. Grey realized that the reason why Shelley was angry that day was that he didn't respond positively to Iron's affection for him. Does Miss Shelley love Lady Iron, the adoring kind? Grey asked which made Shelley blank. Shelley still continued to offer her proposal to Grey but Grey doesn't know if he will accept it or not so he asked the cat and Shelley wondered what Grey is doing. Since Grey can't give an answer, Shelley told Grey that she only wants to be betrothed to Grey, not to marry him. The engagement according to her is a contract that can be broken at any time. He confesses to Grey that he finds Grey as interesting but not to the point that he likes Grey so she will not pry into what Grey looks like under the armor. She doesn't care if Grey is a human or not. Upon hearing it, the cat and Grey were shocked and Grey thought that he has been exposed so he started to panic. Shella stated that Grey is not good at hiding especially since he can be able to use extraordinary magic without the protection of an angel. It's a power that no human can possess and he gave no thought to hiding it like he was expecting to be discovered. Shelley said that she should not the one who should have noticed it and she's afraid that Iron knew about it too. Those who have strong malice towards you are not fools either. Shelley stated, there might be some people that wanted Grey to remove his helmet, even if they can't force Grey to reveal his identity. They will still design to sling mud at Grey and labeled Grey a heretic. Shelley told Grey that he needs someone to provide cover for his identity and engagement is a mutually beneficial option for both of them. She assumes that Grey is not a human starting on the day that he drew his sword for Prince Bob. The fact that he dared to openly disobey the Holy Synod meant that his power does not come from the Holy Spirit. Since they believe that Grey's power does not come from the Holy Spirit, Shelley concludes that it might be from some other superior race good at the magic that can interfere with the Holy Spirit's judgment. Grey wondered if Shelley know which race he belonged to. According to Shelley, considering that Grey has a guardian angel, he must not be a demon. The fact that Grey wears a helmet all the time, she knew that Grey's appearance is extremely different from humans. At this point, since Shelley is still willing to be engaged to Grey even though she knows that Grey is not human, Grey decided to let Shelley witness his true identity. The cat was shocked and Angel Catherine wanted to stop him but Vivian doesn't allow her. Miss Shelley, if you feel scared or sick of what's happening, you can leave at any time and I won't stop you, Grey said. He doesn't want to hide it any longer. Rather, he always wanted to take off his helmet and stand in front of Shelley with the truest side. The cat thought that it will be over and Grey conclude that Shelley must be terrified. He was thinking that he will not be a paladin from now on because he has exposed himself to Shelley. They all thought that Shelley will be scared because she did not utter anything not until she reacted and said to Grey that he was so small. She didn't expect Grey to be very small in person. What she thought is an adult size because of his armor. Grey informed her that he used puppetry to control his armor. Shelley was glad upon seeing Grey and she did not feel any scared at all. Now, can we talk about getting engaged, little Grey? Shelley said which made Grey thrilled after hearing it. After what happened, Grey is overjoyed and his blushing aura is spreading all over the place. The cat was glad that someone has recognized Grey as an undead. Grey has given Shelley the magic to understand the language of the cat and she didn't expect that this cat is the one who guides Grey all the time. While they are walking, someone hit Shelly and this little girl looks like she's in hurry. Grey stopped her and told her to give back the things that she stole from Shelly. The girl cried and she didn't expect that someone caught her. Days have passed and there's a lot of news about the, the paladin. The most important is that he changed the laws of the lion capital and he reduced the severity of the penal code. Except for the particular felonies, the penalties for other crimes have been reduced to almost the minimum and they will be held captive for only two to three days before they will be released. Silver Moon Knights are arresting too many people and citizens feel like there's a pair of eyes watching them all the time because no matter what they will do, they can't escape the surveillance of the Silver Moon Knights. At this point, Shelley wished that Grey would enact some laws to protect the rights of women and children. Since she realized that she needs to talk to Grey, she immediately goes to Grey's room but when she arrived, she saw Grey and Iron arguing because of their different perspective. Iron was mad by Grey's actions that according to her, Grey is ruining the lion capital and even the country. Grey wondered why the nobles is okay to spend their money but not for him to give it to the commoners. Iron said that it's not a question of nobility or commoners but a matter of the economy. 
Gray doesn't understand what's wrong with a society where everyone is rich and no one makes mistakes. Iron was angry because all of this wealth is imposed by Gray and the country now belongs to Gray alone and not to the ordinary people where he's making everyone cooperate with his own idea while ignoring what people really need. Gray's intention is to provide people with enough wealth and give them the royal land to cultivate for free and made the most liberal laws from the people's point of view and he thought that it was what people need. Iron was really mad at Gray while saying, you need to look at the long term and not just the immediate outcomes, but Gray objected saying, What's the point of talking about the long term when you can't even give people the immediate benefits they want, since they will not stop blabbering their different ideas? Shelley interrupted and spilled water on them. They stopped fighting and Iron feels tired and sad. Do what you like. Anyway, I am not responsible for the people of the Lion Capital, Iron said. Iron feels hopeless and Gray felt such intense emotions from Iron. The last time they had a heated argument was when Gray tried to take the children into battle. But that time, the result proved that Gray wasn't wrong. So, this time too, Gray was convinced that he had done nothing wrong. He distributed gold coins for subsistence allowance and arrested guys who had done bad things for a lesson. Every people is cheering on him and wished for a long life for the paladin. Even author Turtle was amazed at how famous the paladin is and that is why he continued to write Gray's novel to get a big sale. Three months later, the one who bumped Lady Shelley was beaten by her father and accused her that she go to the paladin to sue her father. Beating incidents like this are increasing and when Gray heard about the little girl, he still remembers the kid and he's wondering why her mother didn't take her away from that man if his law clearly allows everyone to divorce freely. Shadows explained that the woman is not well and living alone with her children is challenging after a divorce. The man used to work from morning to night to support himself and to meet the taxes. He didn't have time to beat his wife and children when he went home and fall asleep. Gray realized that he should give everyone fair chance to work. But according to Shadow, the man does not lose his job, it's just that the job lost him. He gave up his job voluntarily because Gray sent enough money, which allowed the people to live without working. One of the decrees he issued was that the unemployed will get an extra living allowance. As long as they don't work, they can always get financial support from Gray. According to his law, they can't just ignore these people, and people like the man becoming increasingly numerous. And because of the wealth that Gray gives out, the people of the Lion Capital are getting rich and starting to change. They are becoming extravagant and intoxicated. The surrounding countries are taking advantage of the opportunity to send supplies to the Lion Capital. They were raising prices but the people don't care about it. Isaac's wealth is rapidly draining out. Most importantly, people have become lazy. They enjoy their wealth but they don't work. They don't create it. At this rate, once Gray's money will fade, Isaac will become the poorest country in the world. Gray wanted to think so he ran out of town and when he arrived at the place he wanted to go, he was wondering why there is no watchman in this place. He gave the people all the most fertile land in the royal estate but they did not cultivate it because according to the cat, Gray gave the cultivators more money than landlords can afford. Once a human has a lot of money, it is expected that they will enjoy life and they will not work hard to cultivate the land. Upon realizing it, Gray was sad and blamed himself for what he had done. While he was thinking, Shelley suddenly came and Gray thought that Shelley will scold him for leading the nation to a disaster. He regrets turning the hard-working people of the Lion Capital into pleasure-hungry slackers. He knew that if these people will not farm, even if they have money, people will starve to death. Other countries don't have unlimited food and Gray doesn't have more money. Gray wants to stop all the crimes, but new ones keep happening. He wants to destroy all the evil people, but good people are becoming evil people. No matter how he amends the laws, people find loopholes and it's a disaster. Gray realized that he was making this country poor and turning good people into bad people. Angel Catherine said that when the day comes that Gray will no longer afford to pay, the country will be in riots, followed by famine, and then there will be a plague. There will be tens of thousands of people who will die for no reason because of Gray's passion. That is why Angel Catherine didn't support him to overthrow Benedict from the very beginning. Benedict was an experienced ruler who could feed more people even with blood in his hands. Angel Catherine added that the order and justice they seek are almost worthless to human beings. The human species has never had anything to do with virility. People are taking advantage if someone is kind to them. If someone is righteous, people will take advantage of righteousness. If someone is generous, they will take advantage of that generosity so what mankind needs is never justice, and that is what angels have been doing. Gray has the right notion of doing good but he just doing it the wrong way. Suffering can sometimes make the heart lead to the silver lining but the silver lining is something that people don't appreciate. Shelley stated that Gray has been revising the law over and over again for the past three months but never went outside the framework of the original custom. He wants to promote benevolence to make everyone a good and law-abiding person but never considers the question, why do humans need the law? 
and how to maintain the stability of the social order. The practices of Grey to have ghosts as spies and send out knights to arrest and educate people have proven failed according to Shelley. She advised Grey that to rule by the law is not to judge the virtues, but to rule the vicious, and Grey is doing the opposite, disciplining the virtuous and empowering the vicious. From ancient times to the present, the only way to promote virtue is to punish vice and punishing vice is a thing that Grey doesn't understand. Arrest people and educate them, then make them apologize to the victim and that's the end. Shelley said that even if the perpetrators apologize, the scars of the victims will not go away. What the victim need is not an apology but a price to be paid by the perpetrator. The price can be property, it can be their freedom, and it can even be life. Everyone must know the consequences of breaking the law so that the law had a deterrent and people won't dare to break it. In the past, people were afraid of strict laws because there was always a possibility of wrong judgment. But now that Gray has a spy, there will be no possibility of misjudgment. Gray always put every detail in his private book that Shelley said and he also asked about the food issue and giving out money. Shelley replied that the food is indeed a bit difficult. At the moment that they feed 100,000 people in the Lion Capital, Shelley thinks that they need to mobilize the power of the Chamber of Commerce. The first thing that Gray needs to do as per Shelley is to find a way to get food from the vicinity. An example is the large fiefdom like the Duchy of Betcher to acquire food. If it is still not enough, he should have to personally go to the neighboring countries to borrow grain. The reason why it needs to be borrowed is because of the current prices in the Lion Capital. Once the price is known to the public, Isaac's current treasury cannot afford to buy. Besides, doing the paladin a favor is more valuable than gold coins. The climate of the Lion Capital is good, the rain is also abundant, and the field can be harvested twice a year. It's March and they can still catch the tail end of the spring flowing. If the whole army of the Silver Moon Knights travels day and night, and with Gray's magic, it should be still in time. Shelley advised Gray that he must stop handing out money to the people. From now on, it will change to rewarding farmers and workers, where those who work will be duly rewarded, and those who do not work won't be allowed to eat. If someone starves to death instead of working, then it's their fault if they will die. This wouldn't that be a little too harsh? Gray asked and Shelley expand her explanation that the people who cheated don't deserve more care. That an honest people should be rewarded and those who cheat should be punished. Demon Vivian and Angel Catherine are listening to what Shelley said and Vivian agreed with Shelley's point. Catherine told Gray to ask Shelley what to do in the scene since this kind of state policy that turns from lenient to strict in a short period of time can easily stir public anger, punish them, and execute them. Shelley answered, as expected, Gray objects since executing people is not what he really wants. No blood is no law. You don't know the law. What are the rules? What is justice? This is the human race. Shelley added, Gray dared to challenge the king of the country for Bob. Now, he can't even save a girl who has been beaten by her father. The kingdom of Isaac became what it is now because Gray overlay idealistic ruling attitude couldn't deter the villains. Is the justice you pursue to indulge the villains in bullying the good? Shelley asked but Gray can't answer. She also added that Gray must pay the price of blood. Either the blood of today's reorganization of the law and re-establishment of the rules or the blood of the next day's starvation and riot. It only depends on which one he chooses. After all, it is his own sinful work. I understand Miss Shelley. I will change. All the sinful deeds are mine to bear. While Shelley and Gray discussed how to change the law, King Benedict and Andrew are observing them. Andrew was curious about the relationship between Shelley and Gray but Benedict only knew that Shelley is from the White City. Andrew is waiting for the best time to expose Gray's true identity with the help of the new Archbishop, Dean. Three months ago, on the day of the great victory of Habsburg, Pastor Dean has been promoted to Archbishop. The cat wondered why he got promoted as an Archbishop even though he's not 40 years old and Vivian concluded that Dean's ascension must have something to do with Gray. Archbishop Dean congratulates Gray on his triumph. Dean also asked Gray if they can talk privately about the royal family, Gray, and the future of the entire kingdom of Isaac. Gray concludes that Dean came on behalf of the Holy Synod but Dean denied it and lied that he only wants to personally talk to Gray. The cat warned Gray that Archbishop Dean is just trying to get in touch with and persuade him. Gray directly asked the Archbishop if the Holy Synod has a strong opinion of him. According to Dean, the Holy Synod does have a terrible opinion of Gray or in short, they think that Gray is doing everything wrong. From his point of view, there is no difference between Gray in terms of the result he seeks. The problem is in how he pursues results and his goal is the same. Regarding Bob, he stated that the death of Bob and the other crown princes are tacitly approved by the Holy Synod. Whether orthodox or not, the Holy Synod will only recognize the last surviving person as king. This has been the case for thousands of years and there is no intention to change it. Gray said that it is not right. It is a sin to have the blood of one's king on one's hand and it is a grave sin, the detail of which can be found in the Holy Book, Volume 5 verse 14. He who has sinned must receive the justice he deserves, even if he is the king of the nation. 
The Holy Synod appointed Dean as the Archbishop of Isaac because he knew Gray, and they wanted to talk Gray through him. What Gray wants them to do is to declare Benedict II guilty, abolish his throne, and return all things to justice. The core interest of the Holy Synod is that Gray cannot openly rebel against the decision of the Holy Synod. For example, overthrowing the king recognized by the Holy Synod who was about to be crowned. They have a way to satisfy both sides like bringing back Benedict and restoring his honor as king. Archbishop Dean suggested that Gray can show everyone that he still respects the papacy and Dean will convince the Privy Council to dispose Benedict on other grounds. He said that Gray just need to do window dressing to make the Privy Council think that Gray still respect him. Exclude the suspicion of the royals against the Holy Synod so that Gray can temporarily reconcile. While looking at Gray, Archbishop Dean asked if he was angry. No, I was just thinking about how I should politely reject your proposal. Good intentions should not be disappointed, Gray answered. He politely answered the Archbishop Dean that his proposal is like to tell everyone that Benedict has committed no crimes and that executing his brother was lawful. What Gray saw is that Archbishop Dean and the Holy Synod are encouraging crime. After they talk, their conversation has broken down and Dean doesn't know how he can tell to the Pope. The truth for him is Gray was perfectly in line with the doctrine and the Privy Council were the ones who were wrong but he cannot break into the church. While he was thinking, Andrew suddenly came and Dean noticed the Pope's coat of arms right away. Andrew told Archbishop Dean that he can help but he needs first the dossier on Paladin Gray and everyone around him. The next day after Gray and Shelley talked, everyone was excited because they hear the news that the Paladin is about to issue another decree. When they arrive at the cathedral, they were all shocked if they saw Gray is tied to the crucifix. Even Iron and Robert are wondering what he was doing. Suddenly, Shelley appeared and lied that she was Sarai, the one who watched and judges the Paladin. The people don't know Shelley but Iron and Robert recognized her. According to Iron, Sarai is the name of the king's first mother in the history of Isaac and the sage who raised and assisted the king. Last night, what they both planned is to stop the decree of giving money, restore the previous law, and commission the Chamber of Grains to buy grain. Lastly, mobilize the people to cultivate the fields and get the society which has been stagnant for three months, turning again. It was already midnight when they talked and Gray wanted to issue a decree immediately so he told Shelley he will wake up all the people to fix the problem as soon as possible. Shelley stated that waking up sleeping people at midnight will make it more challenging to carry out the decree but she has a way to get the people in Lion Capital to accept the new decree and that is what they do to this present day. People gossip about why the Paladin will be judged. They started the show and shows the people that the Paladin will be punished in front of them. The fire was lit by Lick himself to match the rhythm, and the auditory effect that came with Lady Shelley's speech was also his doing. People started to shout and stopped punishing the Paladin and even the Silver Moon Knights blocked them. They thought these knights never attack unarmed people, but this time, those who interfere will be beaten. Humans are bullies. Everyone dares to yell at a paladin because they know that the paladin won't hurt them. But only a few people dare to yell at someone who will actually execute them. They show everyone that paladin will be chopped in front of them and Gray said that he will take all the blame as long as nobody will touch his people. At this point, everyone believes that the paladin is being punished on their behalf. To save the paladin, they can only atone through their labor. Once they choose the opposition, they will be reminded that the Order of the Silver Moon is an invincible shadow. Benedict and Andrew heard what just happened and according to Benedict, this is an excellent opportunity for them to incite the crowd for him to revolt and take back the lion capital in one fell swoop. Andrew is aware that Gray is trying to revert the New Deal by acting this out, but all the evil deeds have been conferred for Shelley to perform. The paladin's reputation among civilians has not been affected and is even higher than before. Currently, even if they incite the crowd to revolt, in response, they will only rescue the paladin and not restore the kingship. When the night comes, there are people climbing the wall of the cathedral. They saw that paladin is still on fire and they wanted him to be saved. They are the armies under King Benedict. Gray still continued to show them that he was the person that needs to be blamed for causing a crisis. He informed them that because of him, the fertile land has turned barren. A famine is upcoming. The treasury is nearly empty. Could familiar have learned to commit sin and all of this is his doing? We still respect you. There is no kinder or more upright ruler in the world than you. The army said. Gray began to be serious about what he said. He believes that these people still respect him because they haven't seen the bad things that have happened. He only wants the people to have a vibrant life. But now, everyone is in a drunken stupor. If you still respect me, please support the reforms that will be introduced afterward. Gray stated and the people will follow him for the sake of his life. The following day, with the support of the Knights of the Silver Moon, Shelley began to revise the political laws in the name of Prince Bob. All the new policies of the Paladin Gray since he took office were abolished. The labor system was reformulated by relying on the existing productivity of the Lion Capital. 
and the regulation of the law was strengthened. Some of the nobles, led by Grand Duchess Becher, actively supported the reform. At the same time, most of the lower classes remained unconvinced, but under the high-handedness of the Knights of the Silver Moon, they dared not speak out in anger. When the paladin was in power, everyone could enjoy themselves, but now, they have to turn the soil in the fields. The resumption of work on the farmland is slow, and people keep running away. A city of 100,000 people can't manage by 10,000 knights. To save money, Shelley fired all the troops that serve in the Lion Capital and now, she needs people so she orders the Knights of the Silver Moon to recruit and re-recruit people. She needs a central secretary to mobilize the internal affairs and accounting general who can manage money. Shelley feels exhausted from working on what's best for the country. While Shelley is in that room, Andrew is observing her and he was holding a potion that he also put into Shelley's tea. Shelley's new hires are reporting to her that people are protesting to release the paladin. Shelley immediately comes out and people called her a witch. Shelley still put on a show at this time. Maybe I can really understand you guys. For example, I can also pay you. Shelley stated and ordered Paz to throw away the treasure to the people. People are enjoying the treasure and seem like they don't want to save the paladin at this rate. Paz really believes that Shelley tied Grey to the crucifix. Shelley answered that the whole world is entitled to call these people fools, but not the rulers. No one ever taught the people about the meaning of dignity and decency. The vast majority of them can't read or write. Never before had anyone even treated them as human beings but merely as inferior people. The paladin came to give them the right to be equal human beings, but they did not know how to use this right so they tried to defend their interests in the most primitive way. According to Shelley, people are not at fault. The deliberative foolishness of the past rulers has turned them into what they are now. Shelley wanted to teach them everything slowly and she was hoping that these people will change for the better. Andrew is still following Shelley and the worst thing is that he used necromancer magic on Shelley and she falls from the horse. She suffers pain in her heart that she cannot resist until she became a demon and everyone witnessed her transformation. People were alarmed after seeing her and the Holy Synod priest exposed Shelley that she was the one who compelled the paladin and tied him to the crucifix. They also warned the people to stop picking the treasure and they said that all of these treasures are demonized. At this point, people are shouted to execute the demon and save the paladin. Gray is not aware of what's happening because he was busy regenerating himself from the soul fire. Otherwise, he would really burn himself to ashes. The clothes he always wears can't be regenerated so he's planning to ask for new cloth from Shelley. Suddenly, he sensed uncomfortable magic and Catherine conclude that it may be elf magic. From their communication, the Knights of the Silver Moon are reported to Gray that Shelley turned into a demon. She's suffering from a high fever and her vitals are slowly weakening. The Bewitched of the Lion Capital is blocking the Knights because people wanted to execute Shelley. Vivian believed that at this moment, the Holy Synod finally stepped in. According to Catherine, the Holy Synod is the vicegerent of the Holy Spirit on Earth, but the truth is, they are an organization made up of humans. When the permission of the Holy Spirit cannot be obtained, they occasionally rely on some other power. Paz is wondering how there could be necromancers summoning ghosts all along in a city maintained by a paladin. Andrew followed Paz into the corner and asked to hand over Shelley but Paz doesn't want to give Shelley because Shelley is his mercenary and for him, it's all about trust and loyalty. Since Paz blocks the way, Andrew stabs him without any hesitation to get Shelley and bring it to the people. Gray wanted to save Shelley and he comes down from the crucifix. Angel Catherine warned him to fix his armor first but all he wanted to do is to go immediately to Shelley. People were glad that the paladin is safe now and they told Gray that the demon has been taken down. He was mad after hearing it and people are wondering why Gray becomes mad if he's the one who teaches them to destroy demons and build paradise on earth. All the message Gray heard is about the demon which is Shelley and people were very determined to destroy the demon as soon as possible. He was surrounded by the people and cannot escape. Suddenly, Andrew came carrying Shelley. The papacy is trying to make Gray lose his mind in front of everyone. Gray was wondering who Andrew is and Angel Catherine said that his true identity is an elf, a blood elf who has turned his back on the sacred faith. I'm here to negotiate with you on behalf of the Holy Synod. Andres stated, he offers Gray a chance to reconcile. Immediately announces his confession to the Holy Synod, welcomes back King Benedict II, and takes his people out of the Lion King's capital. Once Grey will make this all, Andrew will return Shelley to Grey in her original condition and help Grey hide his secret. I told you I wouldn't compromise on this matter, so don't waste your time, Grey answered. And because of that, Andrew threw Shelley and prepared his sword while saying, Lord Paladin, I've brought the demon here, please execute it with your own hands. He purposely used magic to hang Shelley's life. Even if her heart is pierced, she won't die, but Gray's necromancy will not work on her. He started to rotate Shelley's bone and because of anger, Gray punched Andrew in front of the people. Shelley lost her eyesight at this point and she asked Gray not to help her. When Gray carries Shelley, people gossip about why he knocked away the person who caught the demon and they conclude that Gray has been corrupted by the demon. 
People shouted to destroy the demon. Shelly holds his hand. Torture me. Put me to execution. This is the human heart. Let me die, please. Shelly stated. By hearing the people's words, Gray remembered his dream before he became a paladin. He believes that Shelly is not a demon but people shouted to execute her. She has done nothing wrong. From now on, there will be no more money for you. You must provide for yourselves. No one should continue to be corrupted. It is my sin to make you all what you are. I will farm with you. Leave with you. Let's earn together. Gray said to the people. But someone threw an egg on his head and shouted that they don't need the paladin to farm with them. All they want is to execute the demoness and return to paladin he used to be because all these people wanted more money and noble life. He still continues to carry Shelley while saying, Based on the paladin's principles, I will not strike an unarmed person. However, if you insist on executing her, just knock me down first and step over my corpse. King Benedict appeared and people was surprised after seeing him still alive with the archbishop standing beside him. Gray was sad after knowing that the pastor he trusted the most and now an archbishop betrayed him. He questioned Archbishop Dean but Archbishop can't utter a word. You, a paladin who wishes to take a demon as his bride, have no right to question a member of the Holy Synod. Benedict proclaimed and people were shocked after hearing it. He's right, she's my fiancé. We have a marriage contract. Gray answered. Benedict laughed and said to the people that the paladin they trust has already fallen into depravity. He announces the execution of the paladin Gray and Shelley. He promised the people that he will maintain the new laws and continue to give people money on the day of his coronation. By getting rid of the fallen paladins and the demon, things will go back to the way they were before. People were excited after hearing Benedict's promise to them and they all now wanted to execute both Gray and Shelley. They all said that Gray was never a paladin of Lion Capital from the very beginning. All the word that the people utter is, execute. They tried to hit Gray but there was a holy light from above. Gray told her not to help because of the agreement but Angel Catherine is insisting because he remembered someone who told her that angels never respond to their cry for help. She knows that the agreement Gray made with the Holy Spirit is she must not be supposed to help Gray. But she doesn't wish to see the flame they worked too hard to ignite extinguish. She doesn't want to grit her teeth and sigh into the wind anymore. She attacks all the people who attack Gray and she called Tenitos to rescue Gray. She told Gray to escape and look for a way to remedy the situation and turn Lion Capital back to what it was before. Since Angel Catherine breached the agreement between Pallet and Gray and the Holy Spirit, she will return to the Celestial Realm and await her judgment. Attention all members of the Order of the Silver Moon. Cease all activity immediately. Get the citizen of the Duchy of Betcher and leave the Lion Capital. This is just a temporary departure. We shall return, Gray said. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Till next time.